Hello, everyone. Rurikan here coming at you with another episode of the Third Fleet Podcast. This is one that has been requested a lot of times, and I do mean a lot of times, and I wanted to make sure that people understand the main reason why uh, we hadn't had uh, Josh and Dino on the show yet is because I wanted to make sure we would get a week where Gaijin would have more than one time slot available because you guys need to understand we have uh, Portugal, Japan, uh, the United Kingdom, and Canada all in the same call at the same time. Yep. So basically me and Josh are sacrificing our sleep schedule to make this happen but we do hope you guys enjoy it um you guys have been very very requested in case you guys weren't aware it's like even the when, number one requested yeah yeah oh, really? yeah because like whenever you guys know that i do those uh those teases i don't know if you guys have seen them where like i'll have the oh, yeah, mystery the guest yeah. Yeah. and there's yeah. a swirly thing and it's like some people will just unswirl it they won't even post the unswirled votes they'll just go like it's not josh and, and cotton <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought That's about it. doing like, like oh. have you ever thought about like playing people like pranking them like have some really funny like image that you've swirled and then when they unswirled it's like a middle finger or something? Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> yeah that'd be great. Like a code each week. You know, yeah. I might I might just do that this week. Just have like a middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> I think that actually be? It says request. And then you'll be, you'll be like, yes, but whose middle finger is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> It's going to be the surprise middle finger. But uh, we're very happy to have you guys here. I'm, uh, I'm super excited because I was, um, I was obviously checking the channel because both me and Gadget, we always check the channel of everyone that we invite onto the show because when we have guests on the show, the show is always more about the guests or if there's like Monster Hunter news, we'll talk about the news as well. But to be honest, not a whole lot has really happened in Monster Hunter recently, right? <laughs> I mean, we've had the update the stories too, but yeah, you know, right. apart from that, not a whole lot really is happening. And um, I wanted to start by just uh, ask, asking you specifically, Josh, because uh, I went back in time on your channel <laughs> to the very. I don't like it. I already don't like where this is going. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's like so you started with League, Minecraft, and then everything kind of felt I, like <laughs> look i've had a few very distinct phases i was league of legends then i was minecraft then uh, binding of isaac then overwatch and then monster Hunter. i'd say that's my five main errors of 11 years of youtube <laughs> i have not watched one of my 11 year old videos in a while but i should <laughs> think what i sound like in them <laughs> It, it it was it was very different it was it was just because yeah. like I, I also started by like most popular like some of your minecraft stuff was super po like i was watching this yeah, yeah, Rube like goldberg million. machine thing and i was like yeah what yeah. is this this is so crazy uh, yeah when i first started i was so nervous to record i was like 16 17 and every other word out of my mouth was uh and then we're gonna um do and then it's gonna be in it, it sounded like i was under threat to record the videos <laughs> otherwise my family would never be seen from again yeah it was actually there along to the whole way just with the gun pointed yeah you there. didn't actually come in front of the camera <laughs> for seven years yeah i yeah. finally got stockholm syndrome and was like yeah sure <laughs> let's record together <laughs> and um I, I guess that kind of brings us to how did you and dino ended up meeting you that's a fun one. one yeah i'll take it okay so this is all a story that stems back to Rainbow Six Siege, uh, if you guys know <laughs> that game, uh, if, if, FPS if, if, game shooter. It's like the, the first thing that comes to mind when you say Rainbow Six Siege is like, that's so far away from yeah, Monster yeah, Hunter. Yeah, right? yeah, it, it's just worlds apart, completely separate. It's crazy. But, unless you're a bowgunner. Yeah, unless you're a bowgunner, there's at least some overlap because, you know, it's the same mechanics. But we met through a mutual friend of ours who now has actually gone on to be a siege caster. Oh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Wasn't it a stream one day and you just joined a random game? Yeah. I, I just joined and said, Hey, are you looking for people to play? Cause I was just looking for people to play with. I was playing the game all the time. I was bored, wanted friends. Yeah. And then you Found got invited friends. to, we have like this big friend discord. that has got like 30 people in and I, I think you just got invited to it. And then I saw you in there and was like, hello. Yeah, and then we and just the sort of, you know, yeah, vibed as the kids say these days. I hate that word so much. I know, no, I know you do. That's why I said it. What does it even mean? I, I, I... 
I feel so old. I'm only 28, but I feel so old. I just, I don't. Oh my god. Well, well if, if 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 you want to, I, I we really give our our one word that the young kids use that I don't understand is I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's like you're saying that's so based. I'm like, what the heck does based? Mean? Oh yeah, ba- like, honestly, I like, think like are you like basting either. a chicken or something like based? Like, what? Or are no, you no, basted? No. I'm like, so what the based. hell is it? based? As in a base with a d at the end. Based. It's not a verb. Base. Yeah, what, what does it mean? Base is a noun. It's, it's, it's an I know adjective. That it, I know what it means, but I don't know why they use that word to describe it. What, 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 I don't. What I don't even know what it means. What does it mean? I say they. I'm 24. I just. I'm an old person on the internet. <laughs> you're the. You're the baby here. Okay. That's, that's no. the, uh, That's your role. Yeah. Wait. What does based mean? Yeah, Gadget still needs to. Like, like, yeah, well, yeah, like, it's, like, it's, like it's, you know, like a story time. based like, oh, yeah, on oh, something. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah that's 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 a that's a good that's a solid solid good a good take. You're upstanding. This is a a, a, a notably. I, I agree with this. Uh, it's good that that type. Uh, I, th- I can't I even think, get specific. Weird. It's that type I of think, that type of idea. The idea behind based is that based as in it has a good foundation. It has a good yeah. Base. Okay, so it's a, so okay. it's a positive word. Yeah, then. It's yes, not it's a positive like word. A, as I don't know if people are like telling me off or what. Like when they say he, it's so based, guys in a like W two F. I'm like, are, are they insulting <laughs> me or are they complimenting me? I don't know. Okay, quick, a quick Google. Apparently, it's it's being yourself and not caring what other people think. <laughs> okay, well there you go. Okay, there yeah. You go. That's, I'm, that's just, I'm just thinking of all the boomer things we can start off to do. <laughs> Gaijin going like, what does based mean? <laughs> it's just really funny to me. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so there's also a, another member kind of like in your team uh, who is uh, Generation Hall. Does he edit like all of your videos? Uh, no, he, he also he does content for you guys yeah, as well. Yeah, he does. He makes about three videos himself each week. It's a funny story with him. If you go back to that ancient cringy time of, of the start of my channel, he's yeah. um, been my friend since high school, like 15 years old I met him. And he started his own YouTube channel around the same time I started mine. In fact, he inspired me to give it a go. And we did our own thing for like a year or so. And then we started making videos together. So I imagine if you if you went on a few of those ridiculously viewed Minecraft videos, you'd hear his voice. And then we did that for the like two, three years. And then we went our own separate ways for a while. He kind of played down YouTube. And then eventually, about a year and a half ago, decided he wanted to give it another go. But since then, his channel stagnated for a while, which is a shame because he made some really good stuff on there. But I was like, hey, look, we always wanted to do stuff together right back at the start. So why not actually do it now? So yeah. he was like, yeah, okay, why not? And just Cause... got him making a few random videos because I kind of wanted to do a bit more variety from just Monster Hunter. So having someone dedicated do that felt like a good idea. It is Basically. most definitely a good idea if, if you want to be able to do anything else to, you know, to have... Someone who's expert in other things yeah, than just muscle, yeah, exactly. because because yeah. because otherwise you're kind of just like painting yourself into a corner, which yeah. is although it is one of the more successful ways to do YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've noticed out of all the main things that I've had, Monster Hunter seems to just be infinite in its longevity. Like I've had a Minecraft audience that got bored. I've had an Overwatch audience that got bored. But three and a half, nearly four years of Monster Hunter, and there's still it's just. I mean, it's wonderful. I've often said that. All the other communities I've been a part of have been quite like toxic and a little bit com- too competitive in a weird way, and it's just not been the best. Whereas Monster Hunter has just been pretty much lovely the entire time. I mean, everyone has a few members that are a bit, uh, but it's just been really welcoming and wholesome. And I, I, I mean, I, I really I, didn't expect not to it. not to mean that it's wholesome, like, to, but it's a weird parallel here. But I kind of think of like Monster Hunter as a drug. Wrong oh, oh yeah, yeah. Because we, yeah, no, yeah. because we, you know, we need to get our fix. So if I'm not playing Monster, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm not playing Monster Hunter for a few days, like while I'm eating dinner or something at my desk, I'll just put on a Twitch stream of Monster Hunter and get my fix. You know, like being able to just talk about Monster Hunter, see Monster Hunter, hear Monster Hunter, it's all part of getting that fix. The, the frequency oh. at which I'm talking about something completely unrelated, and then it's followed up by, oh, that would actually be a good Monster idea. <laughs> yep. just, oh yeah, it's <laughs> just endless. Like it happens constantly. <laughs> So th- there's actually an interesting thing that I've actually met Hollow already at a in in, in the most unlikable of oh, locations I think too. I remember. I think he told me. Oh God. When, when yeah. Was it? 
This was um, back when Epic was working on the this third person MOBA called Paragon. Oh, Paragon. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Remember. Paragon. Oh, yeah. Every time he made, oh, that was a that real was cool great. game. Did you yeah. play Paragon Dino? I played a little bit, not anywhere close to as much as Hollow did, though. He was obsessed. Yeah, with he that tried game. to go professionally. He now he was it. very yeah. good at that game. Yeah, because because you know we got that that chance because like Gaijin, you you probably don't know about this, but like both me and Hollow were actually invited by Epic to go to the Epic headquarters. Like we actually got to go to to the headquarters of Epic and see the game being developed, and like they showed us like. Uh, a build before the game was released and they did it in like this really cool marketing campaign like they they would they sent people like a little a little envelope that had like a special metal card on it and it would have like a number and it's like limited something whatever and they invited a bunch of content creators to go there and test out paragon and i actually really like paragon i, I played that how, how many years ago is i don't even know the game but how many years ago would that be Oh, no, I think maybe five, six years. It's yeah, been a while. while. It got shut down, didn't it's it? About right. yeah. yeah, maybe a bit less, but yeah, it's about right. Sounds cool. They 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 shut it down because then they were like, oh man, this Fortnite thing is is really taking off. Mm, <laughs> I, yeah. I still don't know if it was because of Fortnite or not, but uh, you know, eventually they did shut down the game, which was a shame because because that game had a lot of potential. But yeah, know. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a cool concept, a, a very uh, FPS-style uh, MOBA. It yeah, fun. it was very, very much um, action-focused. But um, so you, t you two guys met and you started like vibing, as the kids say. <laughs> but clearly, no. clearly, a Josh was more um, proficient at Monster Hunter, and that's where kind of you guys came up with the idea with a yep. pro versus noob, which I think is one of the things that a lot of the people in the community just love watching. Yeah, it was well. Basically, I I actually had quite a, a low point with my channel just before World came out, where nothing was kind of working, and I was about fifty fifty on actually quitting. And Ooh. I was like, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it wasn't the best. But I was like, okay, look, I absolutely love Monster Hunter, and there's a new one coming out. In fact, I remember the E three that revealed it. I was in a call with a bunch of friends, and I was freaking out. Everyone else was like, well, I don't know what this is. And I'm just there, like, <laughs> passing out. You will. This is yes, you, you will know a lot about it. I guarantee oh, yeah. you. But I was like, you know what? Instead of quitting for now, I know I love Monster Hunter, so I'm just going to do Monster Hunter stuff and see how it goes, because that's one thing. I've. It's always been my joint favorite game series of all time. And I do not mean that. I started with literally Monster Hunter 1. Back on PS2 when I was Oh a kid. my god! Yeah, like <laughs> I, have, I have been playing it a long time. I, the amount of thousands of hours, I shudder to think. But I, I, I have an unhealthy amount of knowledge on Monster Hunter. Wow. Not that I'm that good at it, I'm alright, but knowledge-wise, <laughs> I'm, I'm there. Whereas, of course, Cotton had never played it. So after yep, two episodes of me just solo playing through World, I was like, this is a really good game and I want a friend to play it. So I started talking to Cotton, I was like, you should try this, I think you'd like it. So we had this dynamic where I kind of was knew everything and you were experiencing it for the first time and I got to kind of have the just you wait till you see this and then you got to react and it was really cool and I mean I loved it I just got to have a first seat to seeing someone experience Monster Hunter for the first time in what I think ultimately is the best Monster Hunter game one of the main things like that that I always call back to when I remember is it what sort legs? of made that dynamic work? Yeah, it's the, it's always the legs. Uh, it was Juratotus because yep. it was the first. It was the first like fishy type creature that I had seen in Monster Hunter because World was my first one, and just coming upon that thing and it was just swimming around the swamp. We're fighting it. It seems you know it's pretty standard. Then it stands stands up, and I get really. I'm just like it. It has legs. <laughs> it's a fish. <laughs> Why does it have oh. legs? Okay, you have man. no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was gonna say, then you get you know Josh coming up showing you pictures of Plesioth. Like, look at this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I eventually ending up in GU and experiencing his first Plesioth hunt with him. Oh, that was Lord. you got so angry. It wasn't even the so hips funny. that everyone always talks about. It was the it's it's the tail sweep that he does. Yeah, it's yeah. the spin. It's yeah. just so long. <sighs> so you're yeah. fish with legs. So we have Josh who started with Monster Hunter One, but you never really, you never really did Monster Hunter content before World came out, right? I have I have got a grand total of three Monster Hunter videos before World, <laughs> and they are all in Four Ultimate. And one of them is me doing the the infamous uh, One Forty Double Apex Rajang 
guild quest. And I, I that has cropped up in videos for random footage when I talk about GU as often as possible. I've got it saved and I just keep inserting it. Like, look, I did I did do one thing before World. There we go. So yeah, it's weird. I've played Monster Hunter for the longest time, but I was very new when it came to being on the YouTuber scene of it and part of that community. So it was it was interesting. So did you have like a a capture three a capture enabled three DS or something like that or did yeah you... yeah yeah I had uh, okay I, I did uh, like Pokemon and stuff so I had a capture on it so I just started doing it. It, it, it I mean honestly it's weird I only I first learned what like emotion value was and how stats work and stuff from actually your videos Gaijin. from that, Gaijin, that's of like course. the first exposure <laughs> I had to the maths and how everything works and here I am this many years later doing build guides and stuff for people and going through the maths <laughs> myself and I just distinctly remember it way back finding trying to work out what the hell armor skills were and how they function mm. and what should I be wearing because I had no idea Yeah they've never really gotten away from that vagueness have they they just love yeah. the uh this get raises by twenty. It's it moderately raises your attack. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh. One of my favorite ones is <laughs> in, in Rise specifically. I remember Counter Strike. We were so confused when we first saw the description for Counter Strike. We had no idea what it did because it's something something like increases damage for a short period after getting knocked off. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and we we first fall end of a wyvern right. That makes sense. Sounds That's, sounds yeah. kind of serious, you know. I, I was knocked off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My face was on a T-shirt in another country. So. It's hey, listen, it's Knock it's off. better than getting knocked up. So you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Plus yeah, that's wrong wrong you get <laughs> yeah, the descriptions are an endless source of uh, of enjoyment. Yeah, it really is. I don't think I put on a mix set until the third gen. So I had the advantage that my daughter was playing in Japanese, so I was I was like, hey, show me the description for this skill because I had no idea what certain things did. I'm like, oh, okay. That's more clear. <laughs> Actually, well, looking was, at was at the Japanese away, version, <laughs> but even the Japanese though, it's it's very vague in some areas. So it's got the same problems at the core. So, okay. Well, we all first one day. The games. I mean, the the reason mm. we're called the Third Fleet Podcast is because <laughs> okay, I, okay, I both, yeah, yeah, okay. both of us. <laughs> I, I I walked into that one. I have again, never I have be, never experienced which, attacking which with an analog game? stick. There's, there's multiple, all right. There's, there's some there's some question there. No, but um, you should, you should get, a, get a T-shirt that says yeah, I use my analog sticks for movement, not attacks. So <laughs> oh, look, honest, I don't know when this is going up. So this might be spoilers, but that's okay. We're we're about to do a classic Monster Hunter one playthrough again oh. and i have been playing it and <laughs> we got I, the, scoop. the most infuriating I, what was i doing when i was like 13 12 years old why did How i did enjoy, why it? was it my favorite game it's the most just aggravating ex <laughs> trying to do the camera with the d-pad run around with the left stick attack with the right stick it, it's I, it took me like three hours to kill a rathalos i have i have I, oh I, I can't i just can't <laughs> you, you know what really it's, it just it's this reminds me of and this is so funny is it was when they were showing off the first Monster Hunter game at Tokyo Game Show way back when that Tokuda-san, the director for World of Night uh, for World, is when he went and he played it and he saw the Rathalos hunt, and he says that's so awesome conceptually, but I could do it so much better. Like he had all these ideas of how to make it like to improve on it, but he was like enthralled by the concept, and so then he joined Capcom. And then he finally got to execute his vision in World, and that was the one that, oh, that was awesome. blew up. Okay, it's just yeah. like so janky, a... janky Rathalos yes. and controls led to Monster Hunter World. So, <laughs> well, I guess that's fair enough. It's worth the pain, and I guess that's the <laughs> thing with Monster Hunter. No matter how you feel about the individual game, the the concept is always so just magic because there's nothing else like it. It's giant yet believable as possible animal that I'm fighting with a big stick. Like it's. What it's so funny we that? say it in terms like realistic or something <laughs> like that in terms of you know monster hunter but there's there's that degree right of, yeah there like, is okay, that's really, very like, anime that's yeah, especially realistic especially when it comes to world if you watch them like the amount of parallels to actual animals i mean look you're gonna have to stop me because i i am way too into the lore of monster hunter i, I do series on it and stuff but like <laughs> it's surprising just how many parallels you can make to how actual nature works it's it's kind of really cool I mean, but that see, also Tokuda, Tokuda is also a a um, both myself and and I know you, Josh, as well. So we got a sneak preview uh, before we started recording. But he's also a very big lover of lizards and has uh, many lizards. 
Yeah, well, that, the and, funny uh, thing in full circle on that, the reason I'm into lizards, and this is going to sound really, like, cliche, but the reason I'm into lizards and wanted one as a pet is Camellios. Nice. Like, I first fought him, and I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> I was like, like what's he, Mom, what's he, he doesn't on? disappear. What's going on here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a chameleon. I can see him all day. I don't understand. Well, no, that really, poisoning me. <laughs> that yeah. really kicks Where's your homework? My lizard stole it. You know, yeah. it's like... <laughs> I yeah, I wouldn't just... I wouldn't be able to have like uh, a lizard too close to me. I I would probably like wake up in the middle of the night, see that thing somewhere, and just like stomp it. Oh, I, oh I, my gosh, they're seeing... so sweet. They're so lovely. I, yeah, I know. The, the, I, I'll tell you what though. I love chameleons. Like I do think that because chameleons are so cool, the way that they move and they, and they have like their little little paws like this, and they go like. Tuck. Look. Yeah, yeah, they've got Look. really yeah. like the, so those deliberate. I like. But the the thing you showed me before this podcast, <laughs> th I I don't want that. <laughs> uh, hey, I love my my. Sorry, go on. I was gonna say, as I said, the the stopping and the in the funny movements is a, is a common thing for reptiles, and yeah, my leopard gecko will do things where she's like doing like the strut walk, and then she'll just stop. Yes, yeah, and I love freeze, <laughs> and so like you know, we'll put on like that meme song of like the prophecy is true. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> See that? I said right. she's in deep thought. She's discovering the secrets of the universe. Yes. Yeah. See, that, that that kind of start and stop walk and then freeze is almost identically how they animated Camellios's walk. The little robotic mechanical yeah. walk that he does. So it's you just immediately see it there. But yeah, that, that huge lizard's like a lizard dog. That's what it's described as. They're trainable. They're they're more intelligent than actual dogs. That, uh, a lot of people think, and they're they're just really lovely when they're not trying to eat your shoes. <laughs> like actual dogs, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say I mean, you yeah, would actual be actual dogs eat your shoes too. So there you go. You're getting the full experience. There, there's a series of books here in Japan that I imagine you would go crazy for. Um, I don't know if you could speak or read Japanese. I'm assuming probably not. I have. Uh, not... I have what I imagine many people has, which is the anime level knowledge of, of Japanese words. I like four of them. I could pick out from hearing it so often. <laughs> Nani? <laughs> yeah, essentially. So, exactly. <laughs> nani, nani the F? I'm going to try not to swear today. Hey, um, here we go. But there's there's a series of books because they do their research so much on, you know, and try to base things on animals when they design the monsters. They have a series of books here where they invite professors of like, you know, a mammal professor or a reptile professor or someone about prehistoric professor from different famous colleges and they write a whole thing about certain monsters, the whole book, of them oh, wow. saying, okay, this is how this could have actually possibly happened. How does Rajang actually use its electricity? And they'll, they'll make call-outs to other actual animals and parts of things that they can do in the ecosystem, saying this is probably based on something like that. And they'll go like really scientific into it. And you're just like, it's fascinating. It's, oh, it's just I crazy. That. It's yeah, not I, I, I try like and a do scientific that very... report or something. Yeah, I try and do that at a much basicer level in, in my law videos, pull up actual animals and go, this is how it does that, so it might do this. But that sounds absolutely fascinating. I would love that. Mm. Yeah, it sounds really cool. There's um, there's always, like, animals, real-life animals that they base all of their creations of. Yeah. So th yeah. that's always, like... I still remember the, the first time that I was kind of fascinated by it because I hadn't really thought about this, but it was in, I think it was in 4 Ultimate when it uh, was announced that it was going to release uh, in the West. And I was just like, I was looking up all kinds of videos and they were talking about Tetsukabra and how Tetsukabra is like a mixture of a toad with another animal that I can't even remember now. And like how everything about Tetsukabra functioned. And I was just like, Dude, this is insane. Like, these guys actually think about all of these things about how the monster yeah, is going to yeah. work and whatnot. But, like, what other developer would say, hey, we're going to have a monster frog and his moves are going to be based off of sumo wrestling? Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just like, I think that's so the magic creative. of it, isn't it? Because, like, no one else and goes it works. to that level of detail. And even if you're not, like, on the surface level taking it in, you still feel it. When you're when you're playing the game, it's inescapable. Yeah. I think that's why it captures so many people, even if they yeah. don't realize why they've been captured. Absolutely. So like, here's a weird, random question I just thought of. Oh, I'm sorry, Josh. I, uh, our delays. I think just. Our, yeah. Not just, D Dino. Uh, Dino. I think I. Could Dino, you were saying. I was gonna say, yeah. There, there is like some sort of level of suspension of disbelief that you need to like latch on to the monster hunter creatures, but once you get past things like. Oh, he's got an immortal reactor that makes him really, really good at not dying. Then you can see all the little biological things that they they reference. Every every little part of a monster is 
some sort of basis in the real world. It's cool. Yeah. So I got to ask you guys, because I'm curious, because I don't actually know if there's a reference to it or what it means. But one of the things that struck me weird when I started playing um, was I played in Japanese first and then I played in English. And I was a little bit caught off guard by the translation for... Um, what's the English word for it? Uh, plate? Like the Rathalos plate? Because, I I mean, they were struck with the worst character limits in gaming history. Because, like, you know, the Japanese uses kanji like crazy. So, like, they, they'll fit in an essay in four, four letters. And they're like, English, you have eight letters, go. And they're like, I can't do anything with that. Um, but I like the lore behind it because in Japanese they call it the reverse scale. Because there's a thing where about dragons that apparently they... <clears throat> They, dragons, mythologically, at least here in Japan, the, the idea was that, I think in Europe as well, um, that dragons were born with one scale that was reversed, like coming out oh. instead of in. And okay. if you touched it, it would irritate the living hell out of them. And so if you if you accidentally touched the reverse scale of a dragon, you would be killed by its wrath. And so the idea is that you, you've carved the, the reverse scale from him. Ah, that's why it's so And, and the really idea that Alatreon is covered in nothing but reverse scales. And so like when you first carve him, you're like, oh my god, I got a plate or a pallium. And then you're like, I got it again. I got it. Oh, I get it. Oh. These, that's, oh, that's all he's really made cool. out of. Yeah, that, I don't think that really comes across in yeah. the English translation. There's no way to get it to come across. But I was kind of just like, does plate mean something special or not really? It's just The nope. closest thing would be a, a scoot, which is like a little... A uh, flat bit of bone that that tends to sit uh, like under the skin, or sometimes it's in bird feet. It's an alligator skin. It's it's an actual part, but it, it's not like rare or anything. It's just a, a part mm. of a few animals. As 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 off the top of my head as I've I've got for you. A scoot. Yeah, S, -S C U T E. I, I don't know if it's yeah. I don't know exactly if scoot is the way Uragon to pronounce it, but it, it, is, well. it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Uragon scoot. Yeah, he's got a scoot. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I've so, got to scoot. <laughs> I was gonna say I have a really weird scoot. question, and I don't think we'll be able to answer it right away, or maybe we can. But something to keep in mind, and we'll get back to it sometime in the podcast. But if there was one monster, like if you were a monster, taking your personality, your appearance, your movement, stuff like that, um, which monster would best be you? Like if I was a monster in the game, which one would it be? Kind of idea, so I'll I'll throw that out there. You want to talk about think about it now, or come back to it later? What, what guys, if I but... already know my answer? There you go. Oh, I would love You're to hear it. Just gonna say your favorite monster. Well, yeah, but that's part of why he's my favorite. Yeah, but monster. I wouldn't say my favorite monster. It's Durambaros. Oh, because there's just something about the way that he's just he's so beautiful and peaceful, and he doesn't really want to like he doesn't want to eat living things. He just wants to eat trees. And he just wants mm. to spin and fly because he's apparently a helicopter. It's his dream, and I want to watch him achieve his dreams. And I, I feel that deeply inside. You know, now that I'm you've said that, if, and I want to eat trees, me, and I want to fly. If someone asked me to fly, boy, you, fly. After years of knowing you, I definitely would go with beautiful, peaceful, likes to eat trees, and dreams of being a helicopter. You know what? You've nailed it. <laughs> that's my uh, that's exactly what I would have oh, said. Nothing compares to a good, a good slab of bark. <laughs> Is 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 there a part on your back that's your weak spot? Oh yeah, yeah, it's my lower back actually. Uh, no joke, I do actually have a weak yeah, spot on my lower real. back because I I I'm six foot four and a bit, six foot five. Oh, wow. I call it Holy crap! But I, I I grew really fast, and my back muscles did not grow accurately with the rest of me. So I've just got a, uh, a weak little lower section. So I do have a weak spot on my back. Yeah. Wow. So you are Drambaros. That's I'm awesome. Drambaros. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Damn. How about you, Josh? Did you say you already I, had a monster in mind? Well, Brachydeus, or most spiritually raging Brachydeus, has always been my all-time favorite monster since his introduction. I, I can't get enough of him. But I think I would give it to my third favorite monster, which is Malfestio. Ooh, because he's, he's Malfestio. got quite the, the bag of tricks, and you either love them or you hate them, and there's very little middle ground. And it makes it, no apologies yeah. for that. That's, that's yep, where I'm I hate him. Go. I hate yep, him. There you go. But I, I can't get enough of him. So there, we've just we've him. just encountered the two average yeah. viewers of a given video. I love it. No, yeah. I can't stand it. This is. But he yeah. he is the origin of me and Rory Khan trying to roast each other on this podcast. I think. 
Oh yeah, because yeah. Like, he was ta- his very kind was talking about how he gets confused by the confused thing and it screws up your controls and reverses yeah, yeah. them. Yep. And I told him that there's a great skill that he could use to get over that, which is get good. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. Just <laughs> do the opposite. It's not that hard. And 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 the worst part about it is like me with having like a, a, a an extensive background in Dark Souls and just having guys and just go get good, just get good. <laughs> it's not that hard. So, just, so, so Rory Khan, before we we answer, I Josh, you, you said something that I want to jump in a little bit. I'm really curious about, which is one, why you love Raging Bracadios, and two, you must have been on cloud nine when you saw what they did to him in Ice Oh, and, oh you have man, no idea. Like, let me let me know about your thoughts about how, the difference between the uh, generations. Was it Generations Ultimate where he debuted? No, no, no three, three ultimate. Three, three, three ultimate. ultimate. Yeah, he was the flagship three ultimate. No, no, Raging was Bracadios. Three ultimate. Oh, raging! Oh, yeah, raging! Yeah, raging specifically. Yeah, that was that was fourth gen. Yeah, I just I love the concept. As soon as I saw him in three U, I think the symbiosis with the slime and how that works is fascinating. And I, I won't bore you with like twenty minutes on how that actually goes down, but it's it's really cool. And this like kind of small compared to most brute weapons, but really fast little boxer that loves fighting and like it, explosive punches. I mean, that, that was really cool. Like I was much younger when Brachios first got introduced, and it just captured me in a way nothing else has. And ever since then, nothing has quite struck me as cool or creative as him. And then Raging Bracky came out, and he doesn't act crazy different. He's just better Bracky. So I, I kind of had them level. But then Iceborne, of course, gave Raging Bracky an absolute just masterclass. I, I think it's still to this day my favorite single fight in all of Monster Hunter ever. Like that oh, wow. final zone actually trapping you in is something I've wanted them to do for a while. I love the idea of monsters playing with the terrain itself or your vision are actually affecting the battlefield and the raw when he ignites the slime is the single best sound that has ever been produced by humankind that Damn. It, it's, it shivers like i love it so much <laughs> and i think his color scheme is much better than normal bracky i i actually made a a, a a little bit jokey but kind of half heartfelt video recently where i was like look bracky's no longer in my top five monsters it's Raging Bracky specifically. Because this <laughs> might sound really petty, but he's got weirdly too shiny and blue in, in World Onwards for me. And I don't know why mm. that's happened. I don't know if he was always like that and it was a graphical thing, but that's that's generally how it's falling. But yeah. Yeah, I think that's bright. I think what was it? Like the idea that the explosions that he's constantly getting exposed to because of the uh, bacteria on him, it it's kind of give him like a metallic like sheen to his yeah his yeah skin it's, and it's a like obsidian shell but he's really shiny it's like someone like went yeah he looks kind of like, like those vi- yeah like plastic play youtube videos kind of where they take like have you ever seen those like youtube videos of like people that professionally clean stuff and it's like oh, really yeah. oddly really sat- satisfying he's like super satisfying to watch yeah you know I love like the, the restoration things yeah it's good stuff power washing <laughs> 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 so he's been restored and now he's way too bling for me yeah yeah it's raging too shiny. Is so cool. Yeah, raging is. Oh, I can't. All time favorite monster. I don't see that ever. What's changing. funny is, my daughter when we were doing uh, raging, I didn't tell her anything about the fight because she, raging, you know, like Brack Dios, she thought he was okay. Like it wasn't necessarily difficult in world because it wasn't like three U where you were so limited in your movement. So yeah. his pivoting around you was like a big thing, and you had to contend with it. So when we she it was doing the fight and she was constantly getting hit by the exploding slime that automatically explodes and you're not supposed to hit it when it's about oh, to explode. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, I don't like this fight so much. And it's <laughs> too big. It's huge. And then we get into the final phase and she says, I love this fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's like, that was so memorable. Let's do it again. And yeah. it ended up being one of her favorite hunts in the game because it's just, like you said, it's a master class of how can you take a monster and re-envision it yeah, exactly. And then just completely rework it in a way that is just so true to probably what they wanted to do in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Like, and they're I... never going back to the old school, like, I've got the zoomies. Uh, I <laughs> yeah, guess just the z- run back and forth. <laughs> he just all of a sudden runs really fast. Yeah. It's like, whoa, <laughs> what happened there? Fast forward? <laughs> <laughs> I guess they did the same with Lunastra as well in Base World, but an even better job with Raging Bracky. I just yeah. can't get enough of it. I know so, how about you, really... Rick Hand? Wait, um, sorry, go ahead. Dino? So, I, I know that Lunasha is a, a really polarizing one in the community. Like, most people either love or hate or, like, everyone seems to be able to agree that the concept of the redesign was great. Some people just can't stand the fight. 
I yeah, but... love it. I love everything about it. Like the fact that she goes completely like everything is based around crescent moons is just the whole mm. design is wonderful. Yeah, and my daughter loves Lunastra as well and doesn't understand why I don't like her. And she told me pretty much the same thing. She's like, you just need to get good. Like, it's a good monster. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. To say she used to just literally be Blue Teostra, it's so much better. She's got her own. I was going to say, yeah, she was just a color swap way back when. Yeah, I, yeah. I read. And she was I've the never final actually faced as well. her. So it's like you get to her and it's like, okay, this is Blue Teostra. That's cool, I suppose. And that's my... how she goes. Did she at least hit harder or something? Yeah, or yeah there she hit a lot harder that? and she was faster. But in terms of moveset, like, it's just Blue Teostra. Same monster. The explosion, <laughs> same color, same pattern. Like, it's barely, barely noteworthy. The wow. the one thing that bothered me in T- with Teostra was only during Iceborne, and I, and I think it was like in the first couple of weeks of Iceborne, the first couple of months, because getting those horns out of Teostra, uh, not Teostra, Lunastra, it was crazy. Like I remember at one point I made a build with like three part breaker, a hammer, and I spent literally the whole fight hammering that head and then finally i broke it and the immediate next hit killed her and i was like what i hit literally nothing but the head with part three part breaker like very high raw damage set and it's like the second i broke the horns instantly killed her i was like oh okay something something doesn't seem particularly right with the how how hard these horns are. I think it was the tempered version as well, but yeah, that yeah. that was a little bit weird. Uh, but I think they fixed it later and it became uh, a little bit better. But in, in regards to the monsters, so I was actually thinking about it while you guys were answering, and obviously my favorite monster is Basil Goose, but if there was, if there's one monster that I think would kind of like, I that would identify me, I think it would probably be Tigrex because he's always punching above his weight. And I kind of feel like that's something that I tend to do. <laughs> like, you, like, you, you see Gameth and you're like, bring it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, like, because I remember, I remember when I when I started playing Souls and I was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing in, in this game. It was like, I started with Demon Souls and I went to Dark Souls. And even then, like, I still felt like I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to keep throwing myself at it until I get it right. So it's like, it's a perseverance thing. And that's the way that I tend to do everything i just i just throw myself at it until i get it right and i kind of feel that's what tigrex does he just kind of like hey i live here now because like i remember <laughs> when we had when we had um i think it was um kogath he was telling us about it was either kogath or bandino who was telling us about how tigrex basically just chooses a, a location where he wants to hang out and the other apex predators of that zone they don't mess with him they don't want to mess with him. They don't want to, because like his roar or whatever is super powerful and he's just a really powerful monster. And even like other other Apex, they just let him roam. It's like, well, I guess he lives here now. He just kind of moves into your house, goes into your fridge, drinks out of your beer, doesn't give a damn. Just, I just it's live here now. <laughs> exactly. He's not worth do, the do trouble. You, there seems like there's some stories there. Have you done that before? <laughs> yeah, that seems a little bit specific. God, it reminds me of that time. I, I know, speaking from experience, sir. I've, 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 made, I've made that threat because, like, you know how when the, the pandemic started and everyone started going, started like hoarding toilet paper for no reason and you couldn't <laughs> no. find toilet paper, <laughs> yeah. toilet yeah. paper in the super. Like, I actually put out a video on Twitter where I said, listen, here's what I'm going to do when I run out of toilet paper. I'm going to find the home of one of you guys that is hoarding all the toilet paper. I'm going to go there. I'm going to look you in the eye while I'm coming across you in your living room. I'm going to look you dead in the eye. Then I'm going to go into your bathroom and I'm going to take the nastiest dump ever. And then I'm going to wipe off of that stack of toilet paper you got there. Okay. And then I'm going to leave you to deal with the aftermath of all that. Okay. And when you want to know who just did that, Tigrex. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't that a Tigrex thing? A Tigrex thing to do? It's just like, oh. yeah. I've I've made that threat. I was like, dude, I don't care. You guys are hoarding toilet paper. Listen, when it comes time to go, I'm going. If it's not in my house, it's gonna be in yours. Huh? Fair enough. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh. And for me, I guess I can't think of what I'm personally but i know like i've asked my daughter the question i was like hey if i was a monster which monster would i be oh here we go and she was she was half serious but half roasting as she always is but i can't think of a better one now ever since she said it and she says you're kangalala 
She's like, <laughs> she's like, you've got a big belly. So you don't need to expand on it. <laughs> yeah, she's like, you got a big belly. For some reason, when you just wake up, you've got, you know, I don't know if it's something you ate, but you've got very bad breath, <laughs> and you fart a lot. <laughs> it, it runs in the family, so I told her, it's like, well, you've got gas as well, so what are you, like a mini conga lala? <laughs> yeah, conga. Yeah, <laughs> just a conga. <laughs> <laughs> turns, out, turns out Gaijin was the most toxic m- member of the Monster Hunter community after yeah, all along. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> of course, I love the idea that if, if you if you get exposed to a smelly fart, you can't use items for some reason. I love that. It's like, what? You just like have brain fart or it's... something? You're like, where did I put it? I don't know. It smells so bad. Right now. Just, no, 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 I can't no, think no, of anything. Face. Like, oh, that's not how you drink. What? <laughs> <laughs> But you want to know what the best part is? The best part is that basically the way you solve that is the same way that the French solved all of their smelling problems. You put deodorant on it, except the French used uh, perfume, which uh, as far as I'm aware, I I don't remember exactly. Because at some point I, I was looking through history and I remember seeing somewhere that like the reason French invented perfume is because they hadn't invented toilet paper yet. And you can fill out the rest of that for yourself. Oh my god, this one. <laughs> Too many poop jokes. You have an alarming <laughs> roster of toilet paper based anecdotes. To- toilet well, humor. More- <laughs> that, that was, yeah. Best Too toilet much. humor I've heard. <laughs> oh man. But, um,. Getting us a little bit back into Monster Hunter territory. <laughs> so yeah, We're in uh, Monster Hunter territory. I guess. Dino, Everybody you, poops, monsters included. You started with uh, Monster Hunter World. It was your very first experience ever. Like both uh, me, uh, Gaijin, as, as well as Josh, we all started a little bit earlier. So you started with all of that quality of life, and then you went back and you played yep. the earlier ones. So how was that experience of like going back and doing like G? I assume you guys played GU before Rise, right? Yes. yes it yeah. was World, then GU, when GU actually released in the West, it was before Iceborne. Yeah. And that was really interesting because I had like this gap where it was World, then GU, then back to World and Iceborne. <laughs> so my brain just was going through these mental gymnastics trying to work the whole thing out. But I thought... Obviously, like when when I'm going through World the first time, all this stuff is it's just natural to me. It's the way that it is. I don't have to give a second thought to it. Refilling things at the item box, moving while healing. That's just that's normal stuff. You go back and even even in GU, you start standing still while healing. It's like oh, that's a uh, that's harder to get used to. You know, you actually have to think about it because if you don't consider when you stop to heal, you're gonna get whacked and lose at least half of the potion. You go back even further, you go back to things like 3U, just trying to move around is in itself a, a more of a struggle, and it's just, it's crazy to see where it's come, and I love going back to see the comparisons, I love seeing the monsters in their older forms especially, seeing everything, like, we refer to it as like a, a, a jankiness, that you get the older you go back, the, the more janky it is, but it's it's a it's not like a mean term, it's meant to be like, wow, that just looks sort of silly, but... I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to know who sat down and went, all right, so when you drink a potion, what we absolutely have to do is make sure they flex afterwards. Who, yeah. who, who did, who, yeah, who, who is, where did that come from? You know, it would, considering how many things happen in game design, it would not surprise me if some animator did it as a joke and during one of their builds. Yeah. And they said, oh, we're so keeping that. Uh, I, I mean, great. that's how, that's how we got, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys are, I don't know how many of you all played. I know that Gaijin has played Dark Souls. I don't know if you guys have played Dark Souls, but like, yeah, that's how we got uh, one of the invading NPCs, who's called Maneater Mildred, is because specifically in that zone, uh, the developers used to test out PvP in in Blight Town, and there was one of the developers that would dress up like that. So it's like the the fat female character with just like a loincloth and whatnot, <laughs> and then a a friggin' bag in their heads and a big old meat cleaver. And they're just like, yep, that thing is going in the game. There you go. Boom, done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but another fun antidote is that I believe I read that the So Tasty song after cooking meat was also a placeholder thing. They were actually going to do like 
I guess compose something original, but I think someone on the team made that and they liked it so much that they just went with it. I wish it was like that's f- it's so funny. So there was like, let's keep. Yeah, it. it's it's part of the personality of Monster Hunter now too. Yeah, it like is. Those, but that, that, see, that's the thing. Just... You can't explain it, but it, it's yeah. so much charm. Yeah, like, like it'd be weird well, if you didn't it, flex after a post. How to make a very kind do a face palm in three, two, one. Mmm, so good. <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta why you gotta bring that up Sorry. it's, it's like bringing up it was it was bad they? enough it was bad enough that it wasn't in world because if i remember right i haven't played world in a while but it wasn't right when you finish no. the there's no so tasty yeah so that was, was bad so and the other thing that was bad is like how when you would go to your room and you would go to the bed and your character would just like sit down on the bed i was like what is this Next thing you're gonna tell me down. is that this this bed is soft. Like you can't, yeah. you, it can't be. It needs to be like rock hard, and you need yeah, the hunter needs, needs to just like the, the jump pillow on needs and to goes like, like concrete. Exactly. He <laughs> needs to jump on and goes like. Bdush. You need to hear that sound, and like, bdush. and then it's like saving your game. It's like <laughs> that was such an integral part of it that when I didn't get that in world, like. If you go back to like the first time, I, actually, those streams are probably deleted on Twitch by now. But like, if you were to go back the first time that I sat on a bed in Monster Hunter and I was just like, what? <laughs> he just, he's sitting on the bed? What? What is this? <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a huge, grumpy back in my day phase with restocking on a hunt yep. before I've, I've learned to accept it. But I, I really was not a fan for the longest time. Because I, I think it. It, ch- it changes how you have to fundamentally balance the game because you have to balance yeah. around infinite potions on a hunt, which makes things a bit too one shotty as you get higher and higher through the DLC. So, eh, I I still, I still like don't it. I still don't like it personally. Yeah. Like, and and it, it's I, something that I brought up during the you know before Rise came out. I made a video where I said like you know here's things that I would like, and yeah. one of the things like I would actually prefer it if we didn't have the restock. Because, no, like, I'm, I'm totally with you, you, you look at the situation, for instance, in Fatalis, and you can tell, like, you know, for yeah, a lot of players, for, yeah, exactly, is balanced for that kind of stuff for you going back and getting yeah. stuff. Like, the way that I did Fatalis was so bad. It was just like, I, I went through like three different weapons in, in the same hunt, like, as a strategy and like changing item sets. It was crazy. It was, it was way too much. And that's not something that I'm a huge fan of. You don't have to do it. But you know, it was no, just like, hey, I I there, can do to. this, yeah, so exactly. I'm gonna. I, I never like, get the argument where if you don't like it, just don't do it. No, that's not how it works. You're going to do what's available to you. Yeah. And when you have infinite healing, little amounts of damage are essentially meaningless. So there's no point giving monsters chip damage because it's again meaningless. So you have to make everything just boom, which is a little shit. I mean, they solve it a little bit by disabling Firecaster in certain fights. So you either cart or you run out of healing. But I guess that's the only real solution if they won't take it away. Mm. Yeah. Just adds to the Elytrion controversy, I guess, right? People <laughs> who are either massively offended by it or think that's in top three hunts ever, you know? And I'm in the latter crowd now. I think I'm on that crowd too. The amount of people that were upset about element requirement when that first came out was so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me how to play my game. I should be able to hunt it using any method I want. I'm like, right? Let's just like, I should be able to hunt monsters without dodging. I don't want to dodge in my monster. <laughs> I feel like that's you know, like one of we the need best... some like. I oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. We're having a weird delay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's Canada to the rest of the world right now. <laughs> yeah, we're at opposite ends. Yeah. Um, I lost my thought. Go for it. Maybe I'll catch it back. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, as I say, we need we need to get some. Uh, I'm surprised the community didn't make a lot of jokes of like you know like the the stranding Norman Reedus like hanging onto a baby. I'm surprised it didn't fo- like Photoshop him with blast weapons. Like <laughs> I don't like fat- I don't like Alatrion and everyone holding onto their blast weapons. But yeah, oh I, yeah, I was, I, I was what I was gonna say was I I love that fight because it sort of demonstrates some of the parallels of the differences of how Monster Hunter is evolving because. When we go back to those older games, especially me with my frame of reference being World being my first game, they start to feel a lot more like like a hunting simulator. Like you're actually putting a lot more effort into tracking these things, not just once, but even if you paintball it, you got to follow it between zones. Some of these creatures in Monster Hunter 1, we were talking about it earlier, they'll, they'll, just, even get me they'll, they'll take to the sky and they'll just fly in circles for a bit. And you've just got to 
be there when they land to hit them or you're timing out because you can't hit them enough. And is is there just, a term in English a for... Argument. In Japan, there's a term that they use for the silver rathalos in the arena, the tower, where he just circles and sometimes it takes him for like ever to come down. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they call it the uh, the rathalos world tour. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a... Fu- I don't know if there's a community phrase for that or if it's the same. Uh, yeah, being based rathalos does that a little bit in Monster Hunter 1. It's... So annoying. Dun, da, da, da. Yeah, <laughs> around the world. I mean, that's that's why you need to pump, pull out the wave gesture and go over to balloon guy. Hope that balloon guy is there, and then like, hey, <laughs> it just like gives you the location of the monster for a couple of seconds. Like, like, aha! If you can do that, balloon guy, why are you not always doing that? <laughs> yes. No, it's because he loses that's, that's track of here, him. though. That <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, that's not an elder dragon. I helped you once. Go deal with it yourself. Yeah, you, you, one, you get one. Everyone gets one. One. It's like now I'm on I'm on lunch break. Leave me alone. <laughs> but uh, no, it's 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 nice to hear though that it's this is very similar to my daughter's experience that you know there is a lot of appreciation that can still be found with people who found Monster Hunter through World and Iceborne to go back to the the more clanky, more classic. I call it classic, but older Monster Hunter, which was a little less Devil May Cry, a little less fluid motion and more yeah. deliberate in, in many things, but find good appreciation for it as just like a different flavor of ice cream, as I call it. Yeah, I, I think every gen is very much its own experience. United by it being obviously Monster Hunter, but it's it's very distinct in how you're going to feel mm. playing through it. Yeah. And, and everybody has like their own Monster Hunter journey, because even though I started with Try, I actually hated it. I didn't like try at all. I didn't. I didn't he get tried monster. It, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I tried it, but um, and and I even bought like the the collector's edition came with like this little chest thing and a, a, a controller for the Wii and all of this stuff, and I didn't like it all. I was like, dude, this game is just not for me. And then eventually, I played Freedom Unite with a friend of mine. And that's when I started getting like I needed oh, my friend to kind of just like go through and tell me like, no, 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 no. Listen, you're playing it wrong. Like you're thinking about levels as in you're progressing through a level like an RPG. You're thinking about killing small monsters. None of this matters. What matters is killing the big monster and then getting its pieces and crafting things and then killing the bigger monster. And I was like, yeah. oh, now I get it. See, one thing I've always admired about Monster Hunter is I've said that the biggest progression in the game is how good you are there yeah. isn't like mm-hmm. i just need to grind or just do this like the biggest single milestone is your ability at the game that's what will get yeah. you further more than anything else and i think your character cool. doesn't level up you do yeah exactly and very few games i feel like actually have that yeah it's i guess dark souls has something similar because i i you know like we could recognize that the difficulty setting is a little bit different on each game. They're tuned to be easier or harder. But there's still a thing where that once you know what you're doing, you'll never quite have that magical period of fumbling around and trying to figure it out. And yeah. that that layer of difficulty being gone is is a huge boost. Like that we'll yeah, we'll never be able to go back. It's like riding a bicycle, right? Like we'll be a little bit yeah. janky at first, but we'll we'll, we'll get back in the groove. And it's like Dark Souls, your first one is your hardest one, and the next ones start to progressively get a little bit easier. Um, now, now, try explaining that to this generation of, of Zoomer gamers. <laughs> it's like, forget about it. Like, they'll, yeah. re- they'll read the whole guide. before. Like, they'll see the strategy before they even fight the boss. And it's like, well, like, what, what's the point? Z- at- yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a Boomer moment. What, what's a Zoomer? It's it's like it's I think Zoomers are the current generation, right? Or is it like are, are we are the the current generation are the Zoomers? I think the current generation of generation Z. I'll be honest, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I think yeah, I think it's after that, Z yeah. or is it Z? I, 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 I think it is Z. Is it? I mean, it would make sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's it's like you know you have the boomers, which let's say the boomers are probably the the most further apart, right? The most disconnected from technology. The zoomers are like the exact opposite. They're totally hooked in. They're like ready to go yeah. on every social network at a moment's notice and write down <laughs> like a a twit longer and tell you all about their feelings and whatnot and <laughs> how they feel about a certain video game and just like going crazy and they probably play Fortnite and whatnot, you know that that kind of stuff. <laughs> And when they see something, they go, that would make a great post on Instagram. Exactly. 
or oh i you thing. know we don't have to worry about the photo shooting conditions we'll just use filters it's all good don't worry about yeah. it we'll photoshop it <laughs> filters just put the filters on it and then and then after they apply the filter they'll put hashtag no filter <laughs> yeah of course yeah. <laughs> of course that's so so based <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really vibe with that this is a based vibe. It, 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 it's Continue. it's lit, man. Nice Let's go. That's lit as hell. Sounds like alien. <laughs> what How do you do, are fellow are kids? <laughs> exactly. Um, um, so, I if, know, you're, if you're young, we're not making fun of you guys. This is yeah. a, it's enduring generations poking at each other. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, so I, we already know that like Josh, your weapon is the great sword. Right. Oh, yes. It's always Stubbly been the great so. sword. I would. I would assume. Whoa! Uh, in full transparency, I obviously oh. in in Monster Hunter One, there basically was just like three, four weapons, and Great Sword was one of them. But the first Monster Hunter game that grabbed me was the second gen, which is where I had my first like hundred hour and then thousand hour in Freedom Unite experience. And I will please like, say uh, longsword. Yeah. <laughs> The first sort of 50 hours of Gen 2, I was longsword after a dabbling in original Monster Hunter. Because I'm not going to say I played Monster Hunter 1 to death. I started with it. I played it for like 10 hours or so as a kid. And I was like, this is cool, but it's a bit too difficult and frustrating for me. And then the second gen is where I really sunk into it. And I started with longsword because that's just the, the made sense to me. And then as soon as I tried greatsword, I have not changed in, well, like nine years now. Longer, actually. Oh, wow. 12. What which game did they add the charging mechanic in? I think that was second gen. I I have distinct mm. memories of charging to, uh, charging on Tigrex and 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 playing the crit draw playstyle against him. So but, I would I would assume the second gen. Mm. Yeah. But here's here's the thing, guys, and you see, I think longsword in second gen is fine. Hell, I think longsword in third gen is fine. To some extent, you, even in fourth gen, but like. When you start going it's into GU and, and and like what's what's it called the the Valor Perry or whatever oh. when they started oh, going yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't I, when <laughs> when you start going that that's when to me the longsword went to the dark side and and the developers like, whoa, were, whoa, whoa. that that's when the developers were like yeah we like all our kids equally but you're so special longsword. yeah yeah longsword really <laughs> they like going in rallies. <laughs> Just wait for 6th gen. You'll be able to hold up your sword really strong and then use it as a shield. You'll be able to actually You'll be able to do everything. And then just sheaf yeah. and everything will die. Behind you. <laughs> yeah. That's what will actually happen once we get you to 6th gen. You'll just start in camp and kill every monster on the map. Yeah, you just automatically counter every attack that comes near you as well. <laughs> yeah. It's just a really solid weapon. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I'm, but surprised then never be I'm surprised they never introduced something about... So I've been thinking about how do they balance the weapon because right now it's way too much of a Swiss Army knife. You can do everything. I was kind of curious, like why, if you're thinking about like actual samurais or like you know like the moves that they're doing, they're really quick, high bursts of energy, right, and, yeah. and very quick movements. Why don't they do a thing where like if you do a counter, it takes half your stamina, and if you don't have half your stamina, you can't do the move. Like that would make sense and would balance it out a little bit and it would it would right I mean like yeah. swing you do it and then your stamina just yeah goes that's the, yeah that's the yeah, cool exactly. fantasy of longsword it oh, used to just... be risk and reward exactly that, that, yeah. that's the thing yeah and longsword is the the counter weapon right so you make it really strong when you land a counter and really weak when you don't instead of also mm. really powerful when you're not countering <laughs> anyway <laughs> yeah, that, that, that <laughs> makes sense like um, do you guys know that those uh, those quests that they've added the the one with um, Apex Zenogre and Apex Mizutsune. I was yeah, yeah, I was trying to that. do that with the Gunlance without carding, and I was getting really frustrated. So I just picked up a longsword, went in there, played like complete garbage, and still <laughs> and still won without carding. And I was like, I think they hit me with everything. I had to go back to camp at one point to go get more supplies, but it was fine. It's like, yep, I, I'm dealing damage. Things are working. The problem with the Gunlance is that it didn't deal damage. But um, it's kind of a shame, though, because like the longsword, there's a real beauty to that weapon for people, oh, yeah. like especially in the older games, mm -hmm. right? Like watching someone from like Monster Hunter Freedom Unite who's really good at longsword, or watching going back to like even four and just the precise. It looks simple, but it's like they are so precise in where and when they fade slash where they delay input, and it's it's a beautiful art form. 
watching yeah, a longsword you can player really play get who's why good. it's the most popular weapon outside of its power it just like if you watch someone play longsword it's like wow that's cool and it does make sense on that front but it's just it's so strong I went through um, through a, a phase in, in 3 Ultimate when I was playing with a friend. My friend played the bow, and I wanted to play the gun, Lance, but it's like we needed to chop tails, and it's like it was not the best weapon to chop tails. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll grab the longsword, and I would chop every single tail you put in front of me. It's just like chop, chop. It's, it's so good. It's just like it's like a vertical chop, chop, yeah. chop. Always hits the tail. It's perfect. Chop, <laughs> chop. <laughs> It's like uh. the best thing for chopping tails. But um, <laughs> so with, with you starting completely fresh in world, Dino, which uh, weapon did you start with? And which was your first like love when it came to weapons? Yeah, you've had quite the journey. I, yeah. So a lot of the time these days I say I, I play every weapon. I main everything. If I have to specify, I'm sort of more of a blunt weapon main hammer and hunting horn in rise style hunting. But to begin with, I latched on to dual blades. Yeah. There was just something about the the speed and the, and the feeling of, of the just the just the ripping through the monster. It just felt awesome. And then I saw the Beyblade attack where you go off of ledges and you just slide all the way along the length of the spine. It's just nothing felt quite as cool to, to me as that for ages. Went through the whole story with that. Uh, finished Xenogiva with that. Then I picked up Bow and started trying Bow. But not just normal bow, because normal bow is cool, but I got really attached to Dragon Piercer because I just loved the way that it looked and the way that it sounded. And so Josh got me to, he was just like, hey, why don't you try making a build? I'll help you come up with the idea for it. We'll come up with the skills yeah, together. The and the Dragon Piercer together. build is one of the best and that was my, done. It was my first actual build that I had in a Monster Hunter game was just to focus around only using it's Dragon Piercer ever <laughs> such a satisfying attack it's the only it's, thing i'll it's say it's a really is fun as as I and mean, then capcom saw your saw your hunts and said okay we gotta do something about this and then and when rise yeah, came along it's yeah like, i'm so sad no! we, yeah it's so bad in rise it's like we tried we really tried to translate yeah. the build but it just does not work it, it's it's particularly good if you like popcorn i feel like that that's like yeah, the best that's attack sound <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you know, you know what was frustrating to me was that uh, that friend of mine that played bow with me in three ultimate, I was able to get him to play world with me, and the first time that I saw him, like when he actually started getting good at bow, because you know you start playing and he hasn't played since three ultimate, he had no idea what he was doing. When he started getting good with bow, I would be so frustrated because like I'd be fighting the monster, suddenly here comes the dragon piercer, and then the tail pops off yeah, of the monster, and, just, and yeah. I'm like, what? Is it? What is this? Like, what's going on? He's like, yeah, dude, bow's great. I'm like, yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> Yeah, I've had a weird relationship with the bow. When it first got added in Monster Hunter 2, I was I I, I love the idea of hunting with a bow because that makes sense, right? That's the classic hunting weapon, hunting with a bow. And I have tried every single Monster Hunter game to use the bow because conceptually I adore it. And every single Monster Hunter game, I have been awful with it and I have put it back after a few hours until Rise, where for whatever reason it has finally clicked and it's mm. as close as anything has ever gotten to me saying, "Yeah, I'm in great sort and bow." Like my my, it happened when I did a Rajang with Bo and I didn't get hit once and he died in like four minutes and I just had it yeah okay this is why people play Bo that is that felt good and that's that's finally managed to get use out of it and I do really you have a preference it. in shot type like spread uh, I, I spread my spread favorite. yeah I nice. love spread the Camellios bow I've got a I've got a magician uh, laid down my set because of course I do with the Camellios yes. bow. And that's where it's. In fact, that's that's the that's why I tried again in Rise because I was like, oh, the Camellia's bow looks so cool. Camellia's. I really want to use it. It's a good <sighs> bow. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if you'd ask me, Cotton, I would always say you're a hammer player. If I had to choose yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> After the bow, it was the hammer that I moved to next for the most part, and I've been. I think I was hammer for the entirety of Iceborne, with you know little spots of longsword as I was messing around with the eye slash because that thing is just fun when it first came out. Till I adjusted to understanding that it just made longsword the parry machine <laughs> but hammer there's just something about swinging a big rock on a stick and some of them are heads on sticks well, like when i went to gu that was one of my favorite things was i realized <laughs> almost the majority of the yeah. hammers <laughs> the amount of silly weapons that we lost in world the, every single gu episode we did it started yes. with cotton 
showing off his new weird weapon that he'd crafted to me. And I was like, <laughs> I've, got I, a, I I've got the head of a Garuga. In yeah, the just a yeah, full exactly. on head at the end of a, <laughs> the end of a stick. It was great. Here's the pizza charge blade, you know? Yeah, <laughs> pizza charge blade. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those are good, and 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 there's something to be said about hammer and iceborne. One of the things that I've uh, that I've always said is like, even though I don't main the hammer, I always said that like hammer is hands down one of the most fun. We- like I I don't know if it's like as good as like some of the other weapons, but it was hands down one of the most fun weapons to play. And you can tell that like Ryozu plays hammer because of how good it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah see, I. I- <laughs> I think that is true, and I think it is no coincidence that Hammer is the only weapon that feels good to play with the Clutch Claw. I think yeah. Hammer is oh, by feels, far the best Clutch Claw really weapon. It feels really good with the Clutch exactly. Claw. Exactly, and all that, of the others the really don't, and smooth. the Clutch Claw is awful unless you play Hammer, in which case the Clutch Claw is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, the, the whole love. time through Iceborne, I, I, I was sort of, I was always team, like, Clutch Claw's not that bad, and it took me <laughs> so long to realize yeah, why. Yeah, she played through it with all of Hammer, and I'm over here like, yeah. you know, it is, it's the worst mechanic. I'm so sad they've added it. In, it in the tenderizes mean- part of your combo. <laughs> in, in the meantime, here I am like, what's a Clutch Claw, and why do I care about it? It's <laughs> <Yes. laughs> like, with my gun, let's go like, I just got long shelling. Boo! Boo! It's great. <laughs> Oh, it was fun times. But um, you, you had a bit of a Gunlands phase as well. I remember that because I've seen yes. videos of you playing Gunlands. So that's what I actually wanted to hear, but you didn't even mention it. Now I'm sad. I did, look, I, I have played every weapon. Like when I when I say I love every weapon in this game, I mean it. Like the bow guns are probably the ones I've spent the least time on. And even those, like there's so much about them that I adore. And I've had my few week phases where I've just gone into them and tried to learn and understand them as much as I can. Cause you know, there's some things that you'll never pick up unless you really just dive into a weapon for hours and hours and hours. No. But I, I want to have that understanding of the game from these different angles. Cause it's stuff like being able to see the same monster from 14 different perspectives. Cause it's never quite no. the same fight. And Gunlance was one that I loved because you need so few damage skills to make Gunlance do anything proper. And as a result, you have so much extra freedom for utility, I feel like, even if you're the type of person who really wants to focus on having that that high DPS build, you can still well, fit all of this evasion damage. Oh, pff, it would have been ice for. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I didn't get mentioned the first time. You're only listing the weapons that are effective. Of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I One of my favorite ways to play, actually, in Iceborne, especially endgame Iceborne with the Fatalis builds, is... Fatal is Fatalis armor, uh, evasion gun lance because it just has so many skill slots, and I just would run full evade window, full evade extender, and just you can hop through like a a quarter uh, of the arena. Lance, it feels yeah. like half the times, anytime yeah. you're moving. You're yeah, talking about so long shelling, right? Yeah, long. I was playing long. Yes. Yeah, long shelling. Yeah. Long, and, and, and I'd play some normal as well. Normal was fun. <laughs> yeah. fun. Yeah. I do love evade lancing, and gun lance is better than lance. Like I, I, I do like gun lance, and I'm very jealous of the the Valstrax cosplay jetting through the air that happened yeah. in Rise. It's like one of the oh, most fun so cool. things I've ever seen. <laughs> it kills me as as a lance. My first main. I, I'm I'm the same as you, uh, mm-hmm. Dino. It's like which weapon do you main? Yes, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. But there's like I started my first proper main was Lance, so there's always been that fun little playful beef between Lance and Gun Lance players because it, they couldn't be any more different. Yeah, they're just very different weapons and how you approach them. But Evade Lancing is close to my heart as well. But uh, it was it wasn't until seeing Rurikan slap Lance video <laughs> that I really gave Gun Lance a good shot in ice. Oh yeah, the I had a lot ledge. of fun with it. The, the, when Gun Lance fun. died using ledges, that was awesome. Yes. And then, um, but I, I, it kills me. But I gotta admit, I think more than Lance, I highly enjoy Gun Lance and Rise. Like Gun yeah. Lance is really fun to play. Yeah, I, I agree like, completely. Yeah. The people that are really good at gun lines, you see these clips where they do like the most cool badass looking things, like jetting in the round and getting the perfect hit, yeah. and the monster over, and it's like it's a very satisfyingly flashy weapon that takes a lot to actually play, for, at least from my very basic little goes with it. Yeah. But I actually want to go back for a quick second. I was gonna say like when you're talking about the hammer, and I think what what mm-hmm. makes it so satisfying is that the monster Hunter team is like the masters in the industry of knowing how to do hit lag. Yes. And, may, and add yep. and add like weight to like an attack. Yeah. And um, like 
God, there's just something about the weight of the hammer and hitting stuff. It fe- you could feel it, you know, and it's there's nothing quite as exciting. It's just a shot of dopamine every time you you pull one of those off and you want, you get the yeah. home run to the head and then the monster falls over and you're just like, I don't care what happens today. Like today's yeah. a good day. Yeah, like, yeah, it's it just feels a, good. This, this, like primal instinct of <laughs> yeah this is this is this is good stuff <laughs> why yeah, keep doing and then, that? It, then your teammates that. are like whoa he's down you're like ko baby <laughs> you know and <laughs> then yeah. everyone goes crazy and you're like you're like dying my friends i have now prepared yeah. the the <laughs> the stunned monster damage. for you to all feast on and it's so funny but it, it i was really worried about the hammer because i thought Iceborne did a really good job with the Insect Glaive when it came to in terms of weight. Like, it had mm-hmm. really fast, boom, like, movements, and it felt strong. And then, for some reason, they seem to just, like, accidentally remove all the weight feeling in Rise for it. It feels, like, really light and nothing, no weight behind anything you're doing. Uh, but the hammer is still, it's still good. Like, then I don't, I, I think mean, as long as the Diozo's around, he will not let the hammer yeah, exactly. stop being a simplistic, yep. wonderful weapon, so... I mean, the you moment... haven't tried Hammer, people. You guys got to try it. It is yeah. really good. It's and I actually fun. think Hammer is one of the best weapons to learn a monster, to like get good at the game. Yeah. Because there's so much observation, understanding, windows, timing. And it's, as I say, it's a it's a turn-based game playing out in real time, basically. Yeah, that's, Your turn, that's my what turn. I've said with, with Greatsword, and it applies to Hammer as well as the big, slow, heavy weapons, is the, the learning and the skill is not from the, the weapon itself and the combos you can do. It's mm. the learning is the monster with those weapons. Whereas Charge Blade, you're over here pressing a billion buttons and a billion combos <laughs> and seeing like like math fly around your <laughs> screen as you as you know you're the superior master race of all weapons. Whereas with Grace <laughs> on Hammer, it's just I will stare at the monster and I will learn every single animation and what that means for how long I have to hit mm. it. And that's why I fell in love with Great Sword, because that is so satisfying. Like and then you get really focus is. level three and you gotta learn it all over again. Yes, it's like, okay, exactly. now now it's very now I can start my combos at completely different times and it opens up so many doors. Nothing hits quite like timing a big great sword hit for the monster to walk into as you bring it down. That is mm-hmm. that is the supreme moment of Monster Hunter. That the the accidental like god moments of using a true charge slash and yeah, you're you know that you, the it's like you're in the middle of the, the combo instinct. and you're like oh crap the monster just ran away you know what I'm committed I started yeah. the animation damn it I'm <laughs> and it finishing it back in and you get it, it in and it's like yep oh that's... and you're like <laughs> and you I that. meant to do that yeah. <laughs> that's what... just put this on Twitter <laughs> <laughs> from, from the beginning I meant how to did do you it know exactly like I'm like <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I mapped it all in my mind. head. Like when when the monster moved away, you see that uh, that picture of like um, what is it the the guy from from Hangover? Uh, yeah, yeah. Goliath yeah, yeah. is going like, aha. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like, my my daughter was my daughter was giving me challenges with the Great Sword because she really likes it in Rise, and she was challenging me on speed runs against Narwa. And she was watching me use it, and she said that she had blood coming out of her eyes, apparently. Um, she was exaggerating, of course. But she's just like, wow, you're bad at this weapon. i got to teach you how to be better. Um, and and so she was telling me, she's like, when you seem like you're miss- you're going to miss the true charge, you get out. She's like, don't get out. Commit. Stick to it. You'd be surprised how many times you're going to nail her. Yeah. Like, okay. So I started doing that, and oh, man, she was right. There's like so many times, just like, there's no way I'm hitting this. Like, let me fly right in front of you. Boom. Monsters <laughs> <So, laughs> so want to be hit. <laughs> yeah. Weirdly, in Rise, once the Great Sword has hit the ground and you think the attack's finished, there's still like about a second where if the monster walks into your still Great Sword, it takes damage as if it had been hit. And it's really <laughs> funny. It's, it's funny because I just recently posted a, a clip on Twitter that shows you exactly that, where I was fighting, uh, I think it was that new Kushala Dora quest. I say new, it was like two or three weeks ago or something. Yeah. And it, near the end, Kushala is just like near a wall, and I'm just like going, okay, blast dash. And then I start spamming shells midway through the air because he was kind of like hovering. And one of the shells knocks him down. And then the moment I knock him down, okay, slam. So I go into a slam and I don't hit him, but his head, you know how he's constantly doing the little thing in his head when he, his head moved into the hitbox a little bit after my hit landed. It was like, I actually, you killed me. (laughs) There's a weird amount of lag on the end of hits. I'm not complaining, but yeah, it it just makes for epic moments. So (laughs) yeah, but, um, so 
how did you guys uh, feel about Rise? Like when you started playing it, right? Because like we had World, World Super, super successful. Uh, and then, you know, you guys went back to GU, played a little bit of GU. How did Rise feel in the middle of all that? I I said that I think getting to Endgame, so getting to Nawa and killing Nawa, that journey in Rise, I think is in contention for the best like first playthrough experience I've had in a Monster Hunter game. And then it kind of drops off a cliff a little bit because there isn't that much of an end game in Rise. I don't want to add fuel to that fire because I'm over here with like hundreds of hours and I adore yeah. the game. And I, I feel like it's weird to be like angry at it that there isn't more to do when you're sat here with a save file with that many hours in. Like that's good value no matter how you look at it. But I, I think the actual first journey through Rise, recording it all with Cotton mm. and experiencing it, is one of the best monster hunt experiences I've had. I really love it. I think Icebond minus Clutch Claw is the best overall monster hunt experience that's ever existed as a complete package. But that first low rank to high rank journey in Rise was something special for me. I think for for me, it, it, I, I agree. Obviously, I've got less experience with the different monster hunter games, but. I've also fallen heavily in love with Rise's Hunting Horn, which is in no other Monster Hunter game. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't feel the same. I can't it's a new have weapon, the same. Yeah. yeah, I can't have I can't have my baby if I go back. It, it just it feels weird. But I I just I absolutely adore this weapon and so that's obviously changed my opinion of the game as a whole because it's the game that has it. It's the only one. But one thing I remember is while we were playing through it together, there was all these little things, these little details we were seeing as we were walking around just the village. Things like the cats in the hub that play the drums and the drum beats are exactly in time with the actual music in the background. And you can tell when they stop, they have an animation where they stop and they dance and there's no drum beats anymore. And it's just like this, all this little bits of passion the that they put the into every little corner of the game. Just it felt mm. we knew that everyone was going to love it at the very least. You know. Do you do you know what the cats' names are? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're yes. actually. <laughs> whenever we make a cheesy joke in one of the episodes, it cuts to those cats doing the dum dum. Like, <laughs> yes, classic. because they are. Like, but that's what yes. they're doing. <laughs> like it just quickly cuts with the but um. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It, it really is. Isn't it? It, it's just, it's just one Was of those it? those things with um, with Rise that I I always like to bring it up because it it is important for everyone to discuss like you know the, the lack of end game and all of that and how <laughs> everybody feels about it because it's just a topic that is always in the community there are some people that have like some very strong feelings about it so I always just like to talk it out because. You know, sometimes you get um, conflicting opinions. Some people prefer some things over the other ones. And I just think that as a podcast, I always try to, to set an example. It's like, hey, look, we can all just talk about things and disagree and it's fine. And we don't have to like jump at each other's throats and be yeah. like, how much did Capcom pay you to make that video? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you, sir? <laughs> Devolve into the, well. If uh, if if you want a polarizing topic, I can bring one up right now. Oh, it's here we go. One. No, it's a fun one because savage for some Gaijin. reason everyone. Well, no, no, not savage at all. Because like, I'm actually uh, I I love uh, your video on this topic actually specifically, Josh. Um, oh. But there is someone. People thought there was internet drama brewing when I'm like, you guys are all smoking something because I made a video about the equal dragon weapon. Oh. Oh, right. And yeah. everybody's like, oh, my God. You and Josh are going to have a field day. I'm like, why? <laughs> and then I didn't understand. What everyone was like, it's like kids after school, they're like, oh, they're going to fight. I'm like, we're probably going to have a beer and like laugh and, <laughs> and, and, and love it. You know, like, what are you guys talking about? Like, and it's it seems to be a polarizing topic because they're like, oh, I thought it was canon, and the whole idea of this whole like, is it canon, is just laughable to me. I don't know if this is a a Zoom generation <laughs> thing or something. Like, did people care so much about like what's yeah, canon? A, and what's oh, a lot of how dare you call it a spinoff? <laughs> yeah, on ancient <laughs> Monster Hunter law, because Monster Hunter at the start is very different from Monster Hunter now, and the type of world and law they imagined at the beginning is again very different from the type of world they imagined there. So back in the first game, when you have this book that shows concepts and you see this equal dragon weapon and how it infers to ancient civilization and that whole backstory, it is really cool. 
And until somebody just comes out and officially says it's a thing or it's not a thing, you're going to have this weird back and forth on, I want it to exist, or you're really weird for wanting it to exist, what's wrong with you? And it just won't stop. I think there's nothing wrong believing either way. I think it's a cool yeah. concept, and if someone wants to go for that, then that's completely fine. I think Monster is very Dark Souls-esque in that the lore is very interpretable. There's little nuggets yeah. that you can expand on or not up to your heart's desire. And I think yeah, that's very... Yeah, it's very intentional that way, which I like. Yeah, it's, it's very fair. It reminds me of that... It reminds me of that... What well, GIF with uh GIF GIF whatever? Oh GIF, my God! Remember, you but what? Don't, don't, do, don't do it! You, <laughs> don't do it! Don't you do actually it. said GIF? I'm leaving. Yeah, I just I, I actually <laughs> double took that. I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I of, do I say anything? Or do I just roll with this? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you would say that, guy. Jin. Jesus, Christ. GIF! Come on! <laughs> oh my God! No, keep going. T- tell it, us about the gif. No, I mean other other days I'll call it a gif. So it's like I don't have a consistency. I'm as I'm as inconsistent as the community is over it. So it's both. Get over it, people. Of course. Um, <laughs> did you understand what I was saying? Okay, it worked <laughs> linguistically. <laughs> it was functional. Um, but it reminds me of that Jim Carrey one saying. So you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> because uh, they're not gonna say no. Okay, yeah, that was an idea from when we were gonna make it a medieval fantasy game, and no, that never happened. They're like, why would we even want to commit? Why don't we just say, yeah, there's a lot of mystery surrounding the ancient civilization. Who knows what happened? And that's that leaves it leaves the head cannon wide open. And my only thing was I was trying to tell people was like. It is still kind of like unconfirmed mechanical stuff. So it's like, don't go on threads yelling at people about, you're wrong about Fatalis. It all goes back to the EDM. I'm like, actually, any theory is plausible. So it's like, enjoy your own theories. There is no actual canon officially for this thing. And then people took it as, he killed my dream. Because many people saw your your video, which again, I, I, I found it incredibly entertaining. Um, And they took it as like, okay, I, I love that this exists. And then they took it as like, you are shooting it down and saying that it doesn't exist. I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, Fatalis got introduced in first gen, yet the biggest amount of solid information we've got about him is his introduction in Iceborne. That's 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 the largest fact we've had about him and trade, etc. And that took how many years to get to? So it really is. Yeah. I, I just think in a world where you have a mantid pulling out a mechanical fortress out the ground and piloting it with <laughs> string... Sure, there could be a giant mech made out of dead elder dragons. Why not? Why yeah. not? Actually, you know what's funny is they made. Did, have you guys seen Legends of the Guild? Yes. 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 We did a little review. Okay, of it. so it's a really fun yeah. film. Yeah, it's it's not spoilers. You don't worry, people, if you haven't seen it. Um, but they do. They actually make a reference to something that sounds like they're talking about the time period of where the equal dragon weapon would have been. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they made a reference saying, you know, like you know. Hunters started, you know, long, long ago, humans started hunting for sport and they started, you know, unbalancing nature. And then nature had to find a way to smack us back into to yeah, balance. Yeah, I took that I'm like, as, a, as a Dragon oh, Ball Oh, that's, yeah, there's yeah, like a little like I reference said it when to it, when this. It, like, that's, yeah, I thought that that's was pretty really cool. cool. So at the end of the day, basically, equal dragon weapon is obviously canon, you know. it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, on, yeah. on a more serious note, I think that the whole idea behind the equal dragon weapon is one of the things that keeps driving me to think about how there's just something shady about the guild like there's some kind of like cia level oh, yeah, stuff I totally going buy into that yeah like, exactly like global like organization that controls essentially everything because hunting is everything in this world there mm. is no way there's not something weird or secret in some warehouse somewhere that only like two people know about i am full on board the uh, well look the at the dialogue guild. in iceborne right like surrounding elatrion and fatalis yeah yeah like, like this there's the some mysterious cryptic group ass dialogue told, yeah told the third forget about about it you didn't say yeah. anything yeah, so like the men in black or something that conversation because it fascinated me it's like what where they're just throwing this secret black dragon erasing organization from okay i mean i know third fleet leader is always high so maybe she it was in her yeah, head she but just I mean... imagined it. <laughs> yeah, i think there's like an elatrion or something some guys told me i don't know yeah, yeah they that's... said beware I, th- I think we should all just chill though you know and that i'm kind of hungry can someone go <laughs> <laughs> I just had a bag of Cheetos and it was delicious. It's like, 
<laughs> I can I, I can just picture her sitting like uh, lying down in her chair, one hand deep in the bag of Cheetos. Yeah, in, in the, yeah, in the in the first leaf face, just draping the other hand with the, the pipe. Smoke. I just love the third. It's so funny. Like they get there and they crash their ship, and they're like, "This isn't such a bad place to be stranded. Yeah, let's just stay. It's beautiful. Yeah, we we'll can make beer. We can smoke and get high. Let's just." clam bake up in here for the next 20 years until fifth <laughs> fleeters come in and be like dude it's been 20 years stop stop get off your butts do yeah, something I mean, there's, no, there's monsters down years. there yeah they had 50 years and they didn't make any major discovery till we rocked up and like guys there, it's like they found some, they and, found and, the, and the cool plants. thing the cool thing is that they're in one of the most beautiful zones of Monster Hunter World. That's probably why, mm-hmm. hey, man, this, this this place looks all right. Like, let's just yeah. hang out here. This is cool. <laughs> we chilling. Yeah, I love the concept of Carl Highlands. It's so yeah, then we so show effective. up and she's just like, could you, like, kill some palooms? I want to fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, they don't, call it the, they don't call it the Highlands for no reason, right? Oh, yeah. you're right. <laughs> It's 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 like an ocean, but there's no water. <laughs> it makes me wish we we had camera just so that people could watch and go like, oh, no water. <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Oh my god. Uh, but um, when it comes to, I mean, obviously we, we've talked about how there's not that much Endgame in Rise, but how do you guys feel about the chase that was the decorations? What is that something that you guys liked, like actually chasing after the decorations? Or would you rather the Endgame be something different and you get the decorations craftable like we got in Rise? I, I on balance prefer the world i spawn way of doing things because i think you can make a better build with zero decorations that you can make a, a better build with no talisman and i i realize that seems bad i disagree because obviously <laughs> yeah, yeah no i i know you would but it, it felt as, as someone making build guides and stuff the amount of like hard searching for talismans i did to be able to present a build that you physically couldn't otherwise because there wasn't those skills available before the updates whereas whereas with uh world and ice spot it's hey this is the build these are the decorations you're looking for this is where you would place them if you have them whereas you can't say hey just go grind a one in two million chance talisman and then it unlocks the ability to actually use this build like decorations was like a slider of strength whereas talismans hard blocked you from doing some things if you didn't have the right one at least until the update came and made everything a decoration that was craftable yeah, I guess, like, er- early on, it was things like weakness exploit was always the big one, right? Like, if you didn't have a talisman with weakness exploit on it, you weren't going to have full weakness exploit. Just simple as that. Yeah, sorry, you can't for do some this people, build if you talk about that talisman. Yeah. But I, I, I think that there's, there should be some sort of middle ground between what we've got in Rise and Iceborne, because I think both have a lot of very strong systems to it. Like, the whole way that you got the decorations in Iceborne, the way that it was dropping at the end of the quest, obviously people love that. In Rise, they don't do that. Obviously, you got to talk to the cat, make him put the things in the urn and meld them for you. Then you just pick him up after. For some reason, that degree of separation from the reward screen just makes it feel a little different, I guess. But when you dive in there and um, you realize that the system that we have just sort of lets you hunt whatever you want and always be able to get rewards and some sort of progression, it's really cool. It's just not a whole lot of direction for some people. Yeah, but I, I think that's ironically the problem because, yes, mm. technically speaking, Rise Talisman Ground is the most open endgame grind because you can kill anything and get points towards it. But people are people and monster hunters exactly. are monster hunters. You're going to do the most efficient thing, which mm-hmm. is chain hunt based now or until you, you're sick to death of the fight. So while you can do everything, the reality is that for most people who are hard grinding, there only exists one method which starts to be boring. Whereas in Base World and Icebond, at least you had like five Elder Dragons that were worth hunting for high-tier investigations, which ironically meant there was more options. And I, I think that's what you have to design for when you're doing an endgame. You have to make it so that the most efficient path is also fun. Otherwise, people will do the most efficient path, and if it's boring, then they'll say the endgame is boring, even if you can go, hey, but you could do other stuff. They don't care about that because they want the most efficient path. Yeah. Yeah, this is where I, I mentioned in on our 
<clears throat> uh, last uh, podcast, but I've come around, and I think where I fall now is that I'm, I'm kind of. It's a shame there's no end game because, like you said, it's it's like your first like critical path playthrough is like one of the best experiences ever, um, and it just yeah. kind of fizzes out. Um, but I also, I try to be an optimist, and I think like how much opportunity this gives them for if they're going to do an ultimate release, which I'm assuming they are. Like it gives them so much opportunity to design an end game that actually works because they're not committed to some idea that they put in the base game. Like the, is they usually have a different director do the ultimate releases. So it's like, they've got all the feedback from Iceborne, all the feedback from the lack of end game mechanics. Now they can actually go in there and, and make an end game mechanic that hopefully hits the sweet spots of both, you know, yeah. and we'll come up with something. So, so I think the potential is, ridiculously high where i just think man if they the, I just this alternate universe i imagine they're like you know what we don't know so let's make the end game rampage and it just that oh thought God. alone wakes me up in the middle I, of the night yeah, with I, cold shakes and the like the concept <gasps> of rampages is really cool but i love really the concept dull, but in reality they're really dull, right they're they're not, the reality is that they're not Pierce like bogun really has a great time in rampages <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it does it's, just... it's an fps game and it's fun as hell yeah yeah but I it's like a zombie it reminds me of like Dead Rising it's like a exactly you know you yeah. get your light bow gun someone is like hey guys stop worrying about the, the stuff we got the counter <laughs> we've got the counter gong watch this and it's like when that's just coming you're like let more of them in before we go for it then yeah. bong Open all the bow guns are going and they just start falling like the what was it the war of the worlds or whatever thing with like Tom Cruise the zombies are just and they just they die at the gate they don't even get like even two feet in it's so fun it's like the way that i that i've always looked at at rampages uh ever since the beginning is like it's always something that i would do in between hunting something else so like i'd be hunting something mm -hmm. and then i'd be like hey let's change the pace a little bit let's do a rampage we can still get materials for something else out of it and it's a bit of a different thing and then you feel fresher for the next hunt that you go for because hey i did this different thing and now i'm doing this other thing the biggest complaint is always that, you know, rampages need a lose condition. There's no lose condition to yeah, rampage. Yeah, I mean, yeah I, I always wish that the final fight would be more of an actual hunt instead of just zerg the monster with endless carts until it dies. Yeah, your yeah. reward will be a bit less, but you don't feel the stakes. Like, not having a mm -hmm. limit on lives, like, that's an integral part of a hunt. That That is yeah. the intensity as they dwindle, but in rampage, it's just kind of not there. Or, or even if, even if you don't have a limit on lives, at least make it so that the monster can actually break the gate. Break the gate. Yeah, because okay. they can't do have it. Have you they ever can't... seen the final gate be destroyed? No, one I've, time. I've, I have never seen it. I've never seen it. I've seen it once. I have seen it one time. And wow. it's because two people were pretty much AFK. It happens sometimes. <laughs> then I believe that two people could handle Even, it. You fight. can. You absolutely can. Like, I just didn't. <laughs> I saw it once, and that's because I literally just sit there with a the relaxed gesture at camp and wait yeah, watching it happen. <laughs> like you, it's it, for a mode that is an army of monsters. It's the most relaxing experience, and that seems the complete opposite of what. And the were music going is for. such a banger. Like the apex yeah, the music. music. I, I love that. that. Yeah, I, really I love cool. that song so much. Fantastic. And it's like. Oh my God! The stakes are up. He breaks through the front gate with one shot, and you're like, "Oh my God, what's going on?" And the the first rampage is great, and then the illusion kind of comes off, and it's like, "Yeah, oh, it's these just, are actually it's just, really easy. It's just something yeah, to beat on." Well, story that's... rampages were Aww. really cool. It's like the rest of what we were saying about Rise, right? Is like the the first time through, the first experience of everything you do, is just so awesome. It's so fun, and that's one one thing that I will hold on to is no matter how many times that you re redo stuff in rise the most fun thing is the gameplay it is just yeah. purely fun the combat yeah, I, I feels do to think me the best that i've experienced combat, rise is the best of all monster hunters like it's just yeah. the wire bug is genius i love it i i don't want to imagine a monster Hunter game without it because yeah, yeah. I, I like it so it. much it's like we've been going back through and playing gu a lot recently uh because you know wanted to to get the experience of the older games and she's really enjoying it uh, and we just blew through it. And I think we've hunted everything almost now. Um, so she's seen everything. Um, but it's constantly, I wish there was a wire bug. Yeah. The, wire bugs the, the main make thing it is when you're so playing a, an older game, every time you get hit, you try and wire fall. <laughs> wire fall. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, no, yeah, I just got to lie here. 
especially when you're using a different controller it's like wait this doesn't feel right what am i yeah. what am i doing <laughs> the funny thing actually is when you're playing gu and you get used to the fact that it was designed for 3ds so the life bar so you can actually see it is is extended to like the full length of the screen yeah mm -hmm. right for 200 and it's just a visual thing it's not actually different than what it is in like rise or world but when you go from that and you go back to rise you're like why is my health bar only half full what's going on here yeah. and you're like no 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 they don't it's, it's uh it's, it's actually one of those things where initially i also thought that like oh man they have to bring the wire bug forward but i'm actually thinking they don't necessarily need to bring the wire bug because i mean if you keep going faster and faster you're eventually gonna have devil may cry hunter yeah that I, is true now yeah. i'm sort of 50 50 on it. i think the wire bug would be fun to come but i feel like it might be the type of thing where like what if the wire bug is just for portable titles? Like maybe they'll do yeah. like the, the separation of the series in that way. Mm. Or the way that I've thought of it is switch skills is the thing I think is likely to actually stick around more yeah. prominently. There's something yeah. really special about the switch skill system to me. Yeah, they, they do yeah, tend it's... to try something a bit radical in a, in a portable game, like we had the um, Hunter Arts and, and Deviants doing... Yeah, I was going to say, that was the concept, right? It's like, there's yeah. only one way to play a weapon. No, there should be multiple ways. So, mm -hmm. yeah. well, how do we actually introduce mechanics, whether it be styles or, or arts? And I think they realized that styles were kind of jarring, and but the arts were a really good idea. So then they, mm -hmm. they you know, evolved it further into the silk bind attacks. But I... I do agree. I think that's going to be something that they're probably going to double down on in the next game for if there's an ultimate release. And I would love to see them keep into like the next big Monster Hunter. In the um, it's, uh, in in the whole thing about the the switch kills as well is that in your first playthrough, it just feels so good to get like a new switch skill because like oh let me see what this one does and it keeps things yeah. fresh. That's actually nothing. Mm -hmm. Something you've never had in Monster Hunter. Yeah. Un unlocking a new move. You have the weapon. You have the whole move set. Whereas in Rise, it's oh now I can do this. Which if you've not played any of the Monster Hunter is really cool. Whereas if you already know the weapon, it's when can I do this again? Finally, when you know what you're <laughs> uh, you're aiming to unlock. I mean, in, in so GU, maybe you guys you would unlocked... agree, or maybe not. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead. Now I was gonna say I'm wondering if you guys agree with this one, but I the thing that I was worried a little bit about, but I was very happy that it, to me it was not the case was that the switch skills would end up being by far better than the regular ones, but it's actually not the case. Like no. what you unlock does not just say, okay, now everything else is just invalidated and it's the old bad one. No, no. It's like, it's just a different way to play. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely which a, I, which a few that about. are maybe a touch lackluster where like, it feels like you always lean towards the other, but they are always like proper yes. gameplay shifts. Like it feels like you're almost like, if you switch all the switch skills over, it's almost like you're playing a different weapon. Not quite, but almost. Yeah. A few yeah. weapons have clear winners and clear losers. No one in their I... right mind is using guard tackle, but I had the choice between true <laughs> what? and rage slash rage slash. I tackle. love it's guard awful. tackle. It's so awful. <laughs> okay. It's the worst thing in the world. It feels terrible. Okay. It's, it's, it, I like the concept and I tried to do an offensive guard, but it just, it's, it's not, it, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> I actually like guard. It's like it's funny because when I think when I did my my greatsword guide, one of the things that I forgot to take into account was the fact that if you use guard tackle, it messes with your with your sharpness. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't because like you know you you you're spending hours upon hours in the training room testing every little thing, and then suddenly yeah, it's like yeah. oh this thing, and people were very quick to put it on the comments like oh you know that guard tackle eats your sharpness right now. I was like God. Oh my god. <laughs> there's all there's always one thing. No matter how always much one thing time is, you spend, unless you unless it's a long sword, there's always one catch. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with, with the long I, I love the fact that like somehow I've rubbed off on Gaijin so hard that he's the one roasting the long I don't even have to do it anymore. <laughs> well it's funny because I, I I me and you know adore the weapon and we we're using it right now in Generations Ultimate. I'm mainly doing Prowler most of the time, but because that's uh, by far my most proficient weapon, I think, in Monster Hunter, in the entire series, is probably Prowler. Um, but she really likes a longsword, and I was playing as well, and it's really, it's fun. It's a good weapon. Um, it's just too good, and so it's fun to wrap on yeah, it a little bit. Yeah, it's annoyingly um, fun, I think. Is yeah. the yes. Thing. <laughs> but um, uh, this 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 is, a good, is an interesting question I was just thinking about I want to pose to everybody, which is... 
uh, especially you two, uh, Josh and Dino, is what um, what's one switch skill that you, you feel that the community at large maybe is not so hot on, but you just love? Is there one or is there... Or just one where it's like, yeah, everyone loves it, and man, do I love it. Like, this is, like, if I was going to pick one of the Switch skills for one of the weapons, like, that is just awesome. This is it. Uh, in, in terms of... I'll start it out so you have some time to, uh, time to think about this, but... Okay, okay. Um, so, everyone... I was really surprised. I thought that the Great Sword has that one where instead of the True Charge Slash... You have rage like slash. The, I don't rage even, slash. That the rage was slash. Be it was. It was named. It was, was named like, after Josh. I mean, you yeah, I love that. <laughs> I was so happy after being like obsessively preachy on Great Sword for years. Like I'm so aware slash. about it, but the I still do it. Slash. I was like, "Yep, there we go. I've been recognized." <laughs> <laughs> so I thought like it was going to be like super niche, uh, and that's just like, you know how are you going to replace a true charge slash? And I never got into it and I tried it so many times and I just can't, the rhythm is so different um, for the hunts that I just can't do it. So it's like me and Yuna are both, you know, huge on using true charge slash and we don't touch raid slash at all. Cause if I touch it, I just die immediately. Oh, I, I can't um, not using it. But so many people are like, what are you doing? Like yeah. no one uses charge blade anymore. You boomer. Like I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, raid slash is all the rage. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I, I think Rage Slash has actively made me a worse Greatsword player because yep. it's yeah. just it's so yep. comfortable to just stand there, not only take reduced damage, ignore the attack that's coming my way, and then be able to aim 360 degrees around you to return it. It's so comfortable. And perfectly playing True Charge is just better. Like, it just is if you're perfect. But even the best speedrunner isn't perfect all of the time. So Rage Slash is just the most comfortable way to play. And it feels great to get hit. And then no matter what it is, it's like, that's nice. Okay, my turn. And then you return it. And it's just, oh, it's so satisfying. I am going to be so Interesting. sad. The monster yeah, I just, that I gets Yeah, I can never from. get the satisfaction out of it. Although I do love that Silk Mine attack, which is similar. You yeah, don't get I don't the 360 also, degrees. I do like yeah, that one a lot. But fantastic. Rage Slash, I just can't. I just can't gel it. I don't know why. Um, but that's that's the one if I had to pick it. Or it's like everyone's talking so much about it. For Yuna, I know for her it's the um, the Sakura slash for Longsword. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, sh she absolutely hates it, and I absolutely love it. So it's like we get in constant fights over whether it's good or not, and she's just like, it's a crutch. She's like, earn earn your color, um, earn <laughs> your no, gauge. There's no and honor. It's such a beautiful attack. <laughs> I love it. It's so cool. Is is that the one you did yeah. an element build with? I can't remember. That was yeah, that was yeah. the one I did the element build. Okay, with. Yeah, yeah, I love was, that attack. Really I think fun. it looks yeah. fantastic. I almost wanted to yeah. make a longsword build just to, to spam that attack because I think it's really cool. Like the visually, one thing I, think I it wanted, looks fantastic. The one thing I wanted is imagine if quick sheath affect the 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 animation the whole way through because you do the sheath at the end. So imagine if quick sheath actually made you go like twice as fast the way that it does with all the other sheathing mm. animations for the longsword, and if it did. Then Wait, we, we gotta stop giving Capcom ideas on how no, to make right, the longsword right, even I better. Say that. Leave <laughs> that out. Cut it out. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> That's a good sword. idea. I'm I'm the, the I'm pointing sword. I'm pointing down the timestamp right now. I'm I'm cutting that out. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. So how about you guys? Any uh switch I guess the better way to frame it is is there any switch skills that people might be surprised to hear that you are a huge fan of? Man, I'm I'm thinking about mine now, but I it's it's like I would have to. It's so many. It's just like yeah. It's like me throwing it. Hey, there's like sixty awesome skills. Name one that you like. It's like oh, hey. it's, yeah, I'm gonna do two, awesome. but they're both oh, I know, sort of. Like, I know which one not... it is. I know which one. But but go ahead, uh, Dino. Sorry. Sorry. They're they're not like I guess they're, they're not unobvious ones, but it's just it's weapons that I don't necessarily talk about all the time. And uh, compressed finishing discharge for the switch axe has to be one of the the coolest just moments when you're the one doing it because if you do it in a multiplayer hunt then it just knocks the entire <laughs> yeah, it's team like away the most disruptive thing i've ever seen sucks and to when be i them. see one <laughs> yeah exactly when i see someone else with it it's like that looks cool but please stay the hell away from me <laughs> it's i think it's that moment where switch x uses like a longsword uses. You remember how much <laughs> yeah. you have oppressed us in the past. How we many do times not you we do not forgive? <laughs> you specifically and then it's like run up to the... a longsword player and he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
like, and then it's like blowing the, the, the smoke. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's you're like, camp. as soon as you started the hunt. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Take that, you tripping bastard. <laughs> and then, like, not but a, sing, not single a, player, you like it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's it's really fun. It's very different gameplay style because it doesn't rely on the the hyper mode, so you can just sort of launch it off whenever you feel like it. And it's got the super armor, which of course uh, changes things too. Another one that isn't necessarily unusual, but I have to talk about it if we're on the subject of, of switch skills and, and the whole silkbind system, I guess, is the impact crater for Hammer. That one is just like, very few things are as satisfying to me in this game yeah. as hitting an right. impact crater double hit because you even get the variance of you have to hit it perfectly to get two ticks of damage on it and it just feels so good. Yeah. It's, it's also, like... like when, when... When I when I saw Impact Crater for the first time, I considered like, you know what, we might just have to main hammer for Rise, dude. Oh, yeah. Look, it's like especially when you see the character after the animation, like its legs go all the way up in the air. It's like, yeah. Woo! Yeah. it's like double the height of True Charge recoil. It's like, okay, it's awesome. <laughs> it's like a master class of like, hey, you thought we were good at hit lag? Wait till you see this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the the thing that I find the most satisfying with that is when and I I make. A mental state to do this is always fight with purple for the charge mm -hmm. state because the moment you knock a monster like it's nothing better than when you ko or you knock a monster down then you immediately just hit the switch button to switch over to yellow yeah. and you're immediately level three you've moved towards the head then you just let go of the buttons and you just you sip on your cocktail and watch it's damage perfect. fly it's just it's so good and they get, mm, we have a parry sure. on hammer too, which is crazy to me now. Uh -huh. We rarely use it because there's just so much other um. stuff going on. <laughs> but it's, such a it's good fun. Weapon. But um, so it's a good good choices, yeah, for for memorable. So so no, here's notable the thing. Switch skills. The coolest thing, uh, the coolest skill, because since since you've said impact trader, I get to say the coolest skill. It's not unusual. Okay. But I have an unusual one as well. But like the coolest skill in the whole game is is basically blast dash. I mean, come on. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I, can, I can agree yeah. with that as well. Yeah, I is, can literally is. fly. Like, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> it's like it's it's funny because I did the I did the full playthrough right, and I uploaded it to to my second channel because I, I did the blind playthrough when we had early access to the game. I recorded mm -hmm. every single fight, and the moment I unlocked blast dash. There's just the section of the playthrough where it's me in the training area going like, wee, wee, <laughs> it's like jumping around all over the place. Just like a three hour clip of just, just flying around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're just like, wee, look at me so fly. Satisfying. This is the best. I'm surprised you never came up with like, you know, athletic challenges, like go from this cliff to there, there, there and try to land it or something. <laughs> using blast dash yeah <laughs> it's it's because i knew that eventually there would be players like the the people who did those uh those dunks oh, on Bos i was like crazy. dude i oh, can't yeah. i can't do that that's some five head level that i can't reach like it's you see the, <laughs> the you get you remember you sent me that clip gadget and that dude is just like looking at basel off in the distance and then suddenly mm. he starts charging in the opposite direction i'm like no way dude <laughs> And then he friggin' dunks Basel. He even like aims at midway, gains a little bit of time. It's like, okay, here we go. Boom, <laughs> dunk. I was like, what the hell? How am I going to do that? There's no way. Oh, yeah. But um, well, I hate to break your heart, but that's not, a, that's not a silk brain attack. Yeah, I, I know, I know. That's a, uh, Wait, it's, it, you, it is you one of the best a, switch skills for sure. You, you, said this, you said a switch skill. You said an unusual switch skill, right? Oh, I did. You're yeah. right. Wow, yeah. I'm getting myself. I'm. Boomer. Yeah, but but I'm but either way, the, you're right. You're right. The unusual awesome. one. The unusual one, and it's gonna and this is gonna be double unusual because not only it's unusual, it's in a weapon that not a lot of people are playing in Rise. It's the axe oh, hopper. Oh yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> axe hopper. I mean, because everybody's using the counter. Let's be honest. Everybody, because that mm. counter is just so goddamn good, right? It's broken. Yeah. But but yeah. I'm just like, dude. There's few, there's there's not that many things that are satisfying. Just landing that axe hopper straight to the monster's face, like, boom. And I was playing with a friend of mine at one point when I was testing this out, and 
We were playing against an Anjanath, and that poor, I, I feel bad for that Anjanath. <laughs> it's just, he would get up and fall down, and get up and fall down, and go <laughs> slam, slam, axe hopper, nonstop, all day. It was beautiful. I love it. I love that skill. It's a lot of fun. But, you know, most people use the more effective, whatever it's called, the, the counter. Or most yeah. people just don't play the weapon, period, because they're upset over the fact yeah. that super amped yeah. elemental discharge is not broken, overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, it's mine... broken, but not in a good way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I think my favorite sit skill is not actually going to go to Great Sword. Surprisingly, I know. I it's think recall it's... Kinsect. I know it. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> recall <laughs> recall Kinsect Wait, is good. is actually really good, though. Yeah. No joke. <laughs> like, I, I, I know. No, like that's so that's the joke. It's it's actually really good, and everybody, and it's the most hilariously named. It's like it's like. Oh, I have a land skill called guard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, my favorite skill is charge sword. Charge sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to give it to uh, dodgebolt on bow. Like, it's, ah, it's the most dodgebolt. satisfying thing. I have Because I, I love spread, which means you have to be really close to the monster. I hate So that. dodgebolt, turning your dodge into a short range iframe that does damage, It when, when that hits and you just keep shooting after, it feels oh, so it's... good. Like, when you sidestep, hit the monster with the melee, it knocks it over because you break apart or something, and then you keep firing. Yeah. And very specifically, normally on most bows, the dodgebolt weapon is an arrow that you quickly whip out and slash with, but specifically on the Camellios bow, it's actually a full-on sword that you pull out. It changes the visual of it, and it's just oh. a full-on sword instead of an arrow, and nice. it's so satisfying. I made a, I'm gonna, uh, a bow I'm gonna, set. I'm going to show you. I'm going to do that tonight with Yuna. She's yeah, gonna, I made a bow set that. that is just melee bow. It's stamina skills and the everything offensive that affects dodgebolt, and all you do is just spam dodgebolt through the monster back and forth, iframing everything and just killing it with melee, and it was <laughs> shockingly effective. It really is because of... Um, I, I realized that uh, it's, power it's coding, close range. I think close range coding. It was yeah, the close one. range does yeah. more yep, bonus damage to dodgebolt than yeah. power coding, which I didn't yep, realize while I started them. testing for this build. Affects but the it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Dodgebolting around with good stamina on and spread is just it's it's the best. But most people don't use it because it's too short range and too stamina intensive. And spread is arguably to at least speedrunners the worst shot type. So yeah, I'd give it to. It's interesting though because that that's the one skill that. I hate that skill. I think I think my, I think my daughter would choose the exact same one, because it's one that both of us were really not hot on at first. We're like, mm. the distance is weird, or whatever. But man, once it, once you try it and it clicks, yeah. I, I I don't know if I could ever go back. It's just yeah, exactly. so so. And then you get that you get that <laughs> ching sound yes, of like metal. Yeah. It's <laughs> almost like the it's almost like a Dino like that, not Dino Valdo, um, Glavinous sound. Like there's like this metallic like ching when you do it. It feels. It reminds me of like the longsword EI counters. It's yeah. so satisfying. It really and you're like, ah, oh, and you're like constantly yeah. hitting the. She's constantly hitting the record clip button when she pulls it off. You know, like really good ones. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, like you 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 uh, KO the monster at the same time right afterwards and all that kind of stuff. It's like, it's yeah, I so distinctly good. remember. It's such the, a good um, choice. Uh, Tigrex Diablos Arena event quest that they added. I was fighting, we're just recording it solo to tell people about it, and I was fighting the Diablos, it was on my screen with Bow, because it it's just kills things really quick, and I was just dodging because that's what you do with Bow, but a Tigrex was charging me from off screen, and by complete <laughs> happenstance, Oops. I pressed dodgeball as he connected, and it broke his face and knocked him down, <laughs> and I just looked like an absolute god, and I was like, yep, <laughs> I knew that was happening. <laughs> you think you're I'm, attacking I'm, me? I'm, yeah. Clip? <laughs> it's like so so let me tell you my my bolt dodge or whatever the hell that thing is called story i went to do that arena quest where because you know you had to do all of the arena quests with all of the weapons to get something i don't even remember what it was but it's like yeah there's a thing that you can get i'm gonna go get the thing i don't care what it is i need to get all the things in monster hunter right so i go into that quest with a bow that has bolt dodge and i'm just like i hate this I, I don't like bow to begin with. I definitely don't like this bow because this dodge is tiny. There's no evasive skills on this goddamn set. There's nothing. I hate my life. I hate this. Like, I died a bunch of times. And then eventually I was like, hey, you know what? How about I just melee this monster? So instead of actually shooting arrows, I was like, no, I'm just going to do the, the melee attack. And I just meleeed 
I think it was Nargakuga. I meleeed Nargakuga to death. There you go. Boom, yep. done. Oh, you can do that now. Yeah. Problem solved. I love solved. that you can too. I, I still didn't like it though, but I was like, well, screw it. If I'm going to have to be so close to the monster anyway, might as well kill it in melee. There, close range coding and, the, and then and just and like whack him with the arrow. In, if I'm not mistaken, you also get, it does, well, you wouldn't, it wouldn't matter because you get unlimited uh, close range coatings in, in Rise, which yeah. Yeah. I didn't even realize until I went back to GU recently. I was like, oh, I only get like twenty or something of these things. What okay, the hell? I thought it was that, that's going. actually um, been that's actually been since yeah, World. it's it's okay, yeah, yeah. So it's not unlimited. So I was like really surprised. I was like, what? So, uh, but you get so used to just unlimited close range and and rise. Yeah, it's, it's so it's nice. The default, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you don't get that in GU. It's kind of jarring when you see that. But um, is that you? Can, I think you get free files with the dodge bolt and the melee attacks. That if you have, let's say, like a poison file or coating on your bow and you do melee attacks, it doesn't consume the coating because you're still using the same arrow, but it does yeah, actually the have stages. the effect. Yeah, it's I, really cool. I know cool. it's a stupid little thing, but I like it. Yeah. yeah it's really a nice cool. detail. Yes. Dodgeable, though. Mm. So yeah. It's few things so, satisfying. what about, I, I guess we kind of get to that point where we talk about stories, too. How'd you guys feel about? Th- First of all, though, before we get the stories too, any of you guys a big Pokemon fan? Y- yes, I'm, I'm a I'm a pretty decently sized Pokemon fan, but Josh is a much bigger Pokemon Pokemon. Pokemon. There you go. Yeah, I'm, that explains I'm a Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon. <laughs> He's a big Pokemon fan. Me too. <laughs> the Pokemon. <Yeah. laughs> I adore Pokemon. I've, I've played so, every every single game. Although I I will pre- I will add a little asterisk of. I've adored Pokemon less and less as each new game's come out, but I still mm. have a, a love I can't deny for the, I, for the franchise. I'm much more of the... I, I love the creatures. I love exploring the worlds a little bit. I don't think I even finished most of them, but I love just like being in the worlds and experiencing what was what was around, you know? Mm-hmm. At least when I was younger. Yeah, was a bit, I finish them a bit more now, but when you're younger, you don't necessarily have that sense of direction, uh, that need to finish. You just want to experience what's there. So how did it feel for you guys to actually have a, a proper good Pokemon game come out? <laughs> One, yes, it's I totally okay agree. because stories. you saw the trailer for Arceus. It's pretty much just like, how do we take <laughs> the stories too and do the same yeah. thing? I, I agree. <laughs> stories is much better than Pokemon, but I, I've played the first stories and, and loved that mm-hmm. too. So I was already fully on the stories yeah. train from the uh, first game. We did a playthrough on it with um, Cotton watching because obviously it's single player. As, as we went through it and it was really really enjoyable and stories 2 was just infinitely better like they improved on it in essentially every mm-hmm. single way i, I think it's a fantastic just game I, I i am addicted to building monsters and i'm addicted to pvp in that game i do a little tournament every oh. sunday so each each week i build an entire new set of monsters on oh wow. it's like changing rule sets and i just i can't get enough of it i don't think cotton's quite as into the building part compared to normal monster hunter no but, not, not quite as much hasn't hooked me quite the same it's uh I, I think it's because it's it's a little bit more work to go and like, you know, get monsties either mm-hmm. to make you know, to upgrade your, your things all the way up to plus five or just to p- make a proper build. Like my monsties yeah. are still not all fully upgraded because yeah. I don't have the patience, oh let me go hunt this monster over and over and over and over until I get all of the genes that I want out of it. Yeah, I I cut and I I, I cheat a tiny bit so the tournament's on sunday generally so i will save the game cannibalize all of my monsters good genes into the ones that i want do the tournament nah. and then load my game so i get them all back <laughs> and it's like all right cool save myself about 15 hours there yeah, yeah. that's a, way yeah, to do I, it. That's a good idea yeah because you have you have several slave slots you can do yeah that. exactly yeah. so you can just bounce back and forward on them. i just really uh helpful. i'm just absolutely fallen in love with the way that they're representing the main series monsters and stories like a way that a lot of the moves are actually shown in the way that they act is shown in the animations that they have. I just absolutely adore. Like, Durambaros, I will never stop talking about the fact that he is not a monster in Stories 2, even though he, he is so in Stories sad. 2. I was livid. It's weird that some things aren't monsters. It's a I real think, shame. I think the saddle, the saddle would have to be right on top of his source spot, and that would be very uncomfortable. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you're right. It is It is better for Durambaros to not be a monster. <laughs> I just wanted him to be. It was a selfish. He just wants desire. to fly. He doesn't he want. Does. It, imagine you, I can. I can imagine you though. like this having a dream. It's like the never-ending story where you're, you're on Falcor, 
Like going the da, 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 you're flying on Durambros Dur- and you two are going like woo Yeah, we're there. spinning. <laughs> Get a little dizzy, but <laughs> <with perfect>. the- <laughs> Yeah, I think Durambros would have the fly uh, action out of combat, you know? It's, it's like a Rathalos, so- just a helicopter into the sky. You just you just aim at a part of the map, press the button, and he just tail throws just himself goes. over yeah. in that direction. We can create a meme. We can say like there was the I, I adore the old trebuchet memes. Or people talk yeah. about like, can you can you flow like a boulder at fifty miles an hour or whatever? We can like do Durambros. Who needs a trebuchet when you have Durambros? <laughs> can fly over walls. Can <laughs> break gates. <laughs> it's perfect siege weaponry. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I I think though the the more egregious example though I think is Tetsukabra. Like yeah, it, that's so yeah. weird. Why why he even I, has those systems in the everything. game where he like has the whole picking up the rock and putting it in front of him like. He has the moves. We just don't get to have them. <laughs> it was it was so weird to me because I I hadn't even thought about it because you know in my head when I was playing uh, because I played a bit of the game before it came out but then I like stopped playing because I wanted to play the whole thing on stream so I played a little bit of the game and then when I was replaying through it on stream on stream you know I see a Tetsukabu and I'm like yeah eventually I'm gonna get one of those and then Chad is like no you're not. I'm like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't ride that one. And that's when I became aware, wait, you can't ride all, literally all of the monsters in the game? Well, what's the point of life anymore? Like, what the yeah. hell? <laughs> what are we doing here? Well, I, I, it could be conspiracy theory here, here, but I'm kind of, after seeing, I think Zamtrios is another one, right? You can't have him as a monster, can you? You can have Zamtrios, you can. Oh, you can? Zeltus, yes. Zeltus, okay, never mind. You can't is another big Never one. mind. I just put my foot in my mouth. Ignore me then. I, my thought was... I think there's seven large Never monsters mind. that you can't get as monsters. I was going to say that I'm completely wrong, but I'll say it and look like a fool anyways because I've already committed to it. Uh, so let's just dig my grave. But I was going to say, like, I, I was almost thinking that, well, maybe they wanted to specifically stay away from monsters that are going to be brought in, let's say, Rise Ultimate or whatever it might be called or oh, if yeah. it exists oh, okay. and and say like that should be a talking point that people really like that monster and they teased it with the, with the baby mm. the one with hojo so maybe they want it to be a thing and they feel that if they included it as a monster in stories too it would sort of take some of the specialness away from it i don't know that's yeah, the that, way i, I was that, yeah. justifying it in my head and then i was thinking well i zamtrios has to come back in a rise ultimate if they're doing it yeah. I mean, come on! Like they even have his little baby Zamites. Yeah, he, exactly. They've got the, they've got flabby belly mechanics from uh, um, Tetranodon. Like it's gonna happen. But I was like, yeah. oh, but he is writable in. Yeah, but he was yeah. also that in Stories gone. One, so it, it, it's entirely possible that could apply to the other one. So like, maybe like I don't want to get crazy here, but what if we get a Celtus or a Celtus Queen? I know I'd love that. They're one of my. I favorite miss oh, yeah. the, I miss the crams and the bugs, and I just I want They're the more so variety good. monsters to yeah. come back. They're like I, I for modern Na- oh, yeah Nagerala. I was about to say yeah. Ma- modern Nagerala would be amazing. Just seeing these monsters in in the next gen, as it were, of Monster Hunter games. Like I I adore World and Ice Spawn, but there's very little width of types of monsters. Yeah, it's, it's like ev- that's a real shame. Everything is a wyvern. I remember the first or time an that Elder I, Dragon. Yeah, I, I was going through the book in Monster in the World and I was like, why is just everything is a wyvern? Like there everything's cuz at the time I wasn't even aware that that was the classifications of the monsters and I was just like, yeah. how the hell is this 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 mudfish over here a wyvern <laughs> what kind of a wyvern is this <laughs> yep. and then it turns out he's a pie sign wyvern okay i mean you know whatever you say i mean you i guess we could have a monkey wyvern but for some reason you call them beasts i don't know what to tell you about that oh no that's a fanged beast though sir that you can't have monkey you can know, have there a, is fanged wyverns simian. as well just just in case you were yeah, exactly. yeah, getting so too comfortable confused. with this but but it is funny how it's like no you can have a pie sign wyvern but you can't have like a simian wyvern no that that'd be too much you yeah can, that'd be insane you, you can have yeah, a thing be a beast. wyvern don't be crazy <laughs> god imagine saying, come like, on it's it's all about the evolution part. trees mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think it has to have scales in some form to get wyvern and anything that's not got that gets its different different classification because like Zenoga has yeah. scales so he's a fanged wyvern where it's called yeah, there's logic but, behind it, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, um, <laughs> what what is y'all, you guys' favorite monsties uh, up until this point? May, maybe not necessarily your favorite one, but one that maybe you liked a lot. I, I don't know, because like I already know that Josh, you're into Brocky. Uh, yeah. 
Dino, I guess you're into... Actually, I wouldn't know what yours is because you can't ride the one that you want, so... <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the closest monster to your favorite monster is Zamtrios. Yeah, the, clo- like yeah, the closest one that's monster. in is Zamtrios. Zamtrios yeah, you is... don't have a Zamtrios, and it really upsets me. I have a Zamtrios. He, he just doesn't have a whole lot of good genes yet, because I'm I'm sort of sad about the ice genes that are currently available, and I wanted him to be stronger when Elder Frost came, and she didn't give me the gifts I was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the genes on the latest monsters are really weird choices. Like, I don't know what Solsi is doing with a, a fire and non-element gene. It's very I cool thematically. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell I'll you why. Can, can you balloon up Zamtrios as a monster? Can you make it blow up like his kinship? All big? Just his kinship. Just, Just his kinship. kinship. That's it. Yeah. Unfortunately, I would. If he did, then I would. He would be the only one I'd ever use. Currently, the one I use the most is my Bloodbath Diablos. I mm. just I love Bloodbath. One of the coolest looking creatures coming from obviously the back the background of fighting a Diablos is one of my earlier really tough creatures because mm-hmm. Diablos is one of the, the big walls of Monster Hunter World for, for anyone who's obviously not experienced with the franchise. Yeah. And he's the second best. Did, have you faced him uh, in, in GU? In GU? Yes. Oh, yeah, we, geez, we, did, yes. we did the extreme, <laughs> extreme bloodbath. Oh, one night. It's that so was fun. a bloodbath. <laughs> yep, I still I scream like a kid when he does like the steam and he blows yeah, when up. He and he lands. Like, and the... <laughs> yeah. It's a, specta- so it's a spectacle. Cool. It's so the drill fun. dives and like, everything. He gets He's so crazy. hot that the blood on his shell yeah. evaporates in scalding steam. It's like, okay, okay, Diablos. Calm and then down. he screams. It's like, yeah. who's a good? It's like Russian roulette. It's like, who's who's it gonna be? Yeah. Boom. Like as soon as he turns, someone dies. Just split off in different directions. Yeah. Sprinting. Like God, please not me. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite things about him in the story is too. Too is he has the uh, he has the the spiral the spiral ground dive attack thing. Yeah, hellbreak. But yeah. he can do it while you're riding him. Like when you get when you ride the monster to prepare to do a kinship attack, you can do that. While you're on his back, and the animation has you on his yeah, back, you go and into just him, and then you dive with up, him, spinning like, underground, and come back up through with him. It's great. <laughs> the one of the funny things about uh, Bloodbath Diablos, I feel, was uh, Super Rad's post. He was he was basically saying, "So uh, does uh, does Bloodbath Diablos co- already come out of the egg with a broken horn, or does he need a little bit of help from a hunter?" Yes. <laughs> See, oh, no. think about that. Yeah, think about that. But with Solsi and Mizutsune, who is who comes out of yeah, exactly. who comes does out it of the egg? Hatch and then you're like, "Come here, little one. We need your eyes." Like that's so when it comes out of the egg, it has eyes. Like you see it. Yeah, when you hatch it, it has over. eyes when it hatches. And then you go to the next screen, and it's and it's and it's blind. What did you do? <laughs> see, this is one of those areas I actually appreciate that they didn't try to force in some weird lore thing they just said yeah, you know what yeah, it's like this it's, a yeah. it's a video yeah. game it's a video game whatever and, and they didn't try anything there's no explanation it's like yeah well what, what we were get what were we gonna do <laughs> you know like <laughs> you just, the only listen, no like is, deep cut cool scene to lore dump <laughs> all right no listen yeah. you, you guys remember how we talked about how there's some shady stuff happening in the guild that's what happens yes. when a, when, yeah, a soul, when a soul seer is born there's someone <laughs> from the guild that is dispatched over and he just has yeah. he has like a, a side ball. Uh, and, and he, he has like a spoon like a very sharpened spoon because I've been told <laughs> this is one of the best instruments to pluck out somebody's and he just goes in and okay. just like scoop <laughs> scoop oh good guy <laughs> and, and then he goes into the Bloodbath Diablos, and he's like, "Well, I'll just take this this one away. You don't need this one." I think that's the same guy that's just putting everyone in eggs too, because like it's, all these mammals in an egg. It's, it's the stable master. Yeah, it's, it's all the, the stable cat. master. It's the cat. I'm gonna that bathe your monsters while you're gone. Ooh. Yes, I look Dog, at- doggy, or is it the palamutes coming out of eggs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's weird. Good boy. <laughs> Dogs come out of yeah, eggs. That- that that definitely gives a whole nother vibe to the to the stable message. Like, yes, Solsir Mizutsuna. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> yeah, it's not a problem at all. Just yeah. bring me a regular Diablos. one. I'll fix it right up. <laughs> Bloodbath yeah, Diablos. I can a... make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really can a problem. Can you get me a Solsir? Shh! Don't speak so loud. Come around here. <laughs> this conversation got really dark. Like you thought, Eagle Eagle Dragon Weapon was dark. Oh my god! It's nothing to what you got. Your your guys' head lore on how these baby monsters are made is just look. There has to be I a brutal. 
I blame Super Rad for this. I'll, I'll tell you right now. I blame Super Rad for this. He opened that can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Urikan? Who is uh, who, who's your monstie? I mean, is it, is it Basil? I mean, obviously it's Basil. Basil's my favorite monstie, but like I'd say, one of the more unusual ones that is maybe not necessarily my favorite, but I kind of always like them because at the end of the day, he's the flagship of the monster that I started with. I mean, started because I started playing it and I hated it, but you know, I I still had the little loggy uh, statue. So, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like Loggy is really cool. And as it turns out, he's also a really good monster. So I just, I don't yeah. even use like Ivory Loggy or anything. I just have like the regular one because I like the colors on that one better. I yeah. think that, I think that Ivory is slightly stronger stat wise, like a little bit, but I'm just like, I don't care. I I, I, yeah, I like the blue one. I play with the blue one. So the hell with it. Yeah. And, That's and the a lot cool of the thing, stories to you. The cool thing is that he is so easy to build. It is like it's almost like power monsters. They're just easier to build than all the other because yes, there's yeah, so much, mm-hmm. so many power genes. Because like you guys try building a Basel, you wanted me to tell you before the updates how many um, fire speed attacks existed. There, there was three. There was literally three of them. And after the updates, there's five now. Fantastic. <laughs> and one of them is that stupid ass attack they gave Mizutsune, which is trash. <laughs> it's complete. Yeah. Like, cause, cause Chad was telling me, oh, Rurikan is like, I think, we, I think you like one of the attacks in Soul Seer. So I went to the trouble of actually going to get a Soul Seer. And then I look at that skill and they're like, yeah, you see it's fire. It's, it's fire speed. And I'm just like, yeah, but it's terrible. Why would I want that? <laughs> At it's least like it's well, better the, than dragon. The it bingos. Just isn't a dragon speed attack. <laughs> well, we got still we got silver wrath of coming eventually. I'm sure we'll get some really good speed fires. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah we got wife and king dance back. That was such a powerful. I gotta say though, like I I've been thinking for the longest time, like my overall thoughts about stories too, and I'm like, at this point, if I were to, I mean, I'm biased as hell because I love the franchise, but it's like outside of a few small little things, like you know, like maybe not having the poogies to find, you know, the exploration like mini game from the first game would have been nice to have, or, you know, like a few monsters not being rideable would have been nice to have. Mm-hmm. And, uh, frame rate dips would be nice not to have and stuff like that. It's like, it's damn near a perfect game. In my opinion, it is yeah. just oh, absolutely. It is special. Absolutely. Like, one of my, one so of the wonderful masterpieces of the game. It has more of an end game than rise. Right. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> It, like it, I guess I guess it does. I, I just yeah. love that you do the elders layer, and then it goes. All right, now for the end game on the end game, go do it again. Yes. Yep. I yeah, I still really I still good. haven't finished Super Elders Layer because I, I no I, I, get... I we're still on the first floor. I, I mm-hmm. oh really okay. okay I yeah. finished it really early. Yuna stopped midway because she just hates the break the part floors. It's yeah, like, that's yeah. that's the main reason we haven't. It's so it's so tedious. Yeah. Yeah. I told her I'll do it for her and get her over the hump because <laughs> I'm like level 80 or something now. Um, I could just insta kill everything, but she's she's just does. I I get it. She just like it. It feels like a chore. On the yeah, topic like on the, the topic of levels, though, am I the only one who thought that for solo play, Soul Seer is extremely overtuned? I, we had that with Arashi. Arashi was mm-hmm. brutal. Like it, yeah. I, it was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like he's there hitting for like seven hundred, one shotting me every yep. other turn. Yeah. Like I, I and don't they've understand. got the states of uh, doing two attacks in a turn. They've got yeah. lots of yeah. HP. I didn't. I, yeah. I thought more... Orochi was easy. Like I beat Orochi like super fast. It was not a problem at all. Okay. For us, uh, Gameth was a joke. Soul <laughs> yeah, Gameth was decently, is a joke. decently challenging, but fine. And then Orochi game was just a random. What what level? Fight. What level are you guys? A uh, seven. I think. Yeah, right around 70, maybe a bit less. Yeah. yeah high, cause, high 60s, maybe cause, 70. Because I'm at 70, and it's like I went after Soul Seer, I think, like three times, and the random NPCs would just die. They just yeah, die. Yeah, the random NPCs are time. horrible against yeah, these guys. And, and the worst part is that I'd be like, okay, here's some health. And then it's like, oh, I have to give you health again. And oh, look at that. I have to give. And instead of me dealing damage, yep. I'm wasting all of my turns. Like, oh, here's some health. And then at some point, like, Mizu would hit me really hard. And I'd go down. It's like, well, I guess we're all dead now because I can't heal both of us at the same time, as it turns out. <laughs> and that happened to me three times. And then I was just like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to go online, get someone that w- that's in the stream, yeah. just come with me, and let's go kill yeah. this thing. And it was like, 
first try instantly super easy yeah. not a problem but but the problem is that the npcs they're just like worthless for soul seer yeah they're they're very sort of 50 50 are the npcs in uh stories too they're either hitting the strongest counter head-to-heads you've ever seen for 2000 damage a turn or they're using an ancient potion on someone that's full health yeah, there is there is a special. So they're, so they're either they're Reverto or they're Kyle, basically. Yeah, basically that's, that's what I'm describing. <laughs> Anyone who thinks Kyle Reverto's so not bad. the best companion by a country mile is playing a different game to everyone else. Yeah. I mean, in, ter- in terms of performance, sure, but in terms of character, nah, man. You you give yeah, me. Yeah, I was no, gonna say I, I, love, I, I was gonna say I love how Stories Two includes an optional difficulty setting by allowing yeah. you to choose Kyle. Yes, it makes <laughs> the game infinitely harder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I, I love it when a monster's targeting Kyle and he's over there charging, taking full damage. I need to pull back this charge, bow spring. It's coming. Yeah. I'm a charging my bow. <laughs> Don't worry. Just throw me the ancient potion. I'll shoot him. <laughs> and the worst part is that a majority of monsters aren't even weak to piercing. So he's not even yeah. dealing them. He's just like, Don't worry. I got this. It's like, dude, that monster's not even weak to piercing. What are you doing? I, I You're will, worthless. In, in Kyle's defense. He does carry floor seven of the elders' lair for you. That's his only function. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, well, he's only there. He's away. only there for that one that, floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's There's all. There's a puzzle that makes it. you use him. Yeah. That's all. He's yeah, basically. For. Yeah, but it, it's like it's so frustrating. <laughs> that as a and gun- he has he has the best palico ever. As as a gun mm-hmm. lance main, yeah. having to deal with with all of these restrictions of the piercing is just like oh my god. It's like I go into Soul Seer and I'm like, okay, let me test to see if I can use my gun lance. Nope, look, he's, nope. none of them is weak to piercing. This is fantastic. I love my weapon. Thanks. Hammer time. <laughs> Thanks, how do you Capcom. Feel about how gun lance was put into stories to you? Because I love the way that they translated a lot of the systems. Uh, I think gun lance is amazing. And I think it also yeah. kind of reveals uh, their kind of like design philosophy for the gun lance as a whole because it straight up deals less damage than the other weapons. Like it, yeah. it's just <laughs> it's like the, no, it, 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 it basically Chaos Slayer, it, who's this big gun lance main, he was just like he basically said on Twitter, it's like okay, this this clearly shows you that gun lance is meant to deal less damage than other weapons. It, it's just it is what it is. You know, but uh, overall, I think that the mechanics of the Gunlands are freaking fantastic. I love it. Uh, the The biggest problem is that you have to rely on getting head to heads. You really need to get head to heads, yeah. and then the Gunlands is excellent. But um, you know, in order to yeah, if you can't get head to heads, and you're you're just sitting there like I can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. But it's like to make up for that, I I go with the Basel armor who that has all out XL. So basically, I get maximum damage from shelling for free because shelling doesn't actually cost mm. any kinship. Yeah. So yeah, even it's not yeah, the fight, best yeah, min max armor for Gunlance because that would be Grimclaw. But Grimclaw, you'd need to be getting more head to heads. I, th- I think Grimclaw works better when you have uh, someone like revert like a hunter in your party as opposed mm-hmm. to an NPC. Because yeah. there's less targets for the monster to pick, so we'll pick you more often. So, yeah. But but overall, like Gunlance is fantastic in in the game. I love it. Yeah. Fair enough. And it's not like you have to min max so, the stories anyway, really. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I'm gonna take us off the subject of stories too, really, quick, because I know we're 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 getting uh, close to my my time limit of where when I have to go. Uh, but I mean, I wanted to ask you, uh, specifically Josh, um, like how you come up with some of your skits for the beginning of your videos, because like it, it reminds <laughs> me of, if, of some other YouTubers, but you, you do let you, you generally start with like pretty, like, I don't like, how can you, do you, you must record those in the afternoon because I imagine you get quite loud <laughs> with some of the, <laughs> you really put a lot of energy into them. So I imagine it's a, it's a fun production to watch, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of fun like the, the general philosophy is that the immediate start of a video either needs to instantly give information that's useful or it needs to instantly be entertaining so having this little like open like skit that that still sets up the concept of what we're going to talk about or what we're going to do but in a funny way is I, I can't remember when specifically we started doing it but i, I feel like it really works a lot of the time it can be frustrating because even though i know exactly what i want to do for the other 95 percent of the video i've not mm. thought of a skit yet so i can't start making the others because it feels weird to start <laughs> before i've got the intro but most of the time they're a lot of fun and i'll i'll have moments where I'm, I'm going to sleep and i'll think oh that's the perfect intro and i'll go on my phone and write it down for when i wake up the next day and a lot of time we 
talk and get their ideas mm-hmm. back and forth. I mean, a big one that we do is give personality to the various NPCs of, of the Monster Hunter world. Like, yeah. we, we have so many comments that are along the lines of, I can't see the commander in any other way than the personality you give him when you do voiceover lines. Oh, well, this is just the way that he talks. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's like we've just assigned a like skit character personality to every major yep. NPC, and that's just how they are. And it's a lot of fun to play with. It, it's it's really cool because like when I was um, coming up, I did a, a guide for someone who would just reach the end game of Stories 2, and there was a thing that I was missing, which was like, I knew that there was an Elder Quest, but I didn't remember exactly what was the trigger. And I went to your video, and you're just like, zoomed in on the on the, the girl that's like doing the, the mineral sorting. And you're just like, <laughs> I'm just here appraising minerals. And I was just like, what the hell is going on? Oh, yeah. She's like, hey, yeah, I'm in charge of minerals. I'm in charge of sorting this. I'm in charge of unlocking the Elder Dragons. And I'm having a great day. Sorry, what did you say? Go, go back one. Like, unlocking Elder Dragons. And that was like the intro skit of that. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in that. What, you're interested yeah. in minerals? No, the Elder Dragons. And then the actual, you know, video starts. And it's like, I just love getting, I mean, we both yeah, love doing it. The little, little NPC thing. talks. <laughs> it just sets yeah. it up. That that stuff is pretty friggin' hilarious. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's one of the things that we tend to see from uh, the people that watch us too. Is like we surprise even the people who watch every single video we put out sometimes with just the stupidity that we get up to in those because those are those are where we go completely unhinged sometimes. And it's just like we're just we just want to entertain people for thirty seconds and then and then go. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Oh yeah, we have. Like, oh, it is, it's, it's it's very fun to watch. Yeah, it's what leads us to really overly analyzing every little part of every little town and map in every month. Yeah, because we've always started going like, okay, so what can we do that's a little bit funny for this it's material? Yeah. So yeah. we're just walking around Kimura Village, going, oh, that that like random fish on a on a pan there that's kind of vibrating. Okay, let's work <laughs> with that. And then we just build like a little skit around it. Like that dead fish became the rampage fish that has PTSD yep. from his time in the rampage. And it, like zooms <laughs> in on his eyes with like battle sounds and black and white and sad music. He's the rampage like, quest giver, that yeah. That just happened because we walked past a, a, a dead fish on a pan. And yeah. it just yeah. keeps yeah. going. There is not a single place in the Iceborne Gathering Hub that we have not stood in front of yeah. and used as a, as a target <laughs> for this. And we're working on Rise 2. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. It's it, it's 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 really good for for the monster hunter as as a whole too because they put so much thought into every little yeah, detail. Yeah, exactly. Like we can we only do it because about. they put so much detail into the environments, and it's really cool. Yeah, they do all kinds of crazy stuff in there. It's it's mm-hmm. a blast. But anyway, as uh, as Gaijin was saying, I know that you have a, a hard out soon, Gaijin. Uh, so unfortunately, we have to start wrapping up here, guys. Uh, this was. Fantastic having you guys over. Uh, is there what are you guys currently working on in the in the channel? What's like the next uh, the next big video? Uh, I mean the next I, I guess as I mentioned earlier on the next big project that's starting is that classic Monster Hunter one. Yeah. I would say playthrough. It's markedly a struggle through <laughs> as it currently stands. <laughs> that that's gonna start I think at the end of this week. Again, I don't know when this is going up, but. That's, that's, oh, it's, that's it's, the big one. That it's going in. up tomorrow. Like, I, I always oh, go okay. like, oh, right. instant. Yeah. It's, 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 right. it's, we have the scoop now. Unless you want me to mute <laughs> cool, it perfect. out, otherwise it's the scoop. No, no, that's no, fine. You're that's, good. We're going to start episode one on <laughs> yeah. Saturday, I think. and That's, oh, that's, that's going to be entertering to watch. Yeah, we're really excited about it. I, uh, if, you, if you don't want spoilers <laughs> for, for, I think, episode two, then don't listen to this next bit. But it took me 45 minutes to kill a Yan Kutku. That's 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 how Monster Hunter One is, okay? And I don't, oh. I, <laughs> I, I love some of the design philosophies because the hunts, a lot of them are just, how can we make it hard to hit the monster for the majority of the time? <laughs> oh, it's like purgatory. It's so I, fun. Honestly, for, it's hey, so fun. It, it, yeah. Look, forty-five minutes is still less than fifty. Exactly. Yeah, it's true. That's the only thing that matters, okay? Yeah. I've just I've reignited what it a feels win is like a win. to do the uh, the walk of shame, where you go from all your zone <laughs> all the way back to camp, sleep in the bed for full yeah. health, yeah. all the way back to the monster, take a hit, all the way back to the bed. It's like, I won't <laughs> give in. 
Oh, that's the way that you. Oh, right. But you, you can still. Can't you pick up herbs in Monster Hunter One? Yeah, yeah. That's the, you're desperately gathering every spot. It says there's nothing else there. <laughs> Stuffing all the herbs, and you're trying to find blue mushrooms. Combine them. Accidentally make garbage because you forgot to bring your book of combos that you got to carry around. <laughs> and it's just. It's like wading through treacle. <laughs> So it's just, it's great. Even the freaking the monster notes for the hunter's notes, you have to buy those. Yeah, you don't get you don't get hunter notes by default. You have to buy them from an NPC to update your journal with info on the monster. Oh man, there there's, there isn't even a journal in those games, is there? There's, there's just, no, there's just a little there's uh, menu that just lets you cycle yeah. through the monsters. You yeah, know, exactly. That's it. You get a single like paragraph, and you're done. It's like, oh yeah, the Yan Cuckoo is real annoying. There you go. Yeah, that's it. You <laughs> paid for the privilege. You paid for that information. Yes. Yeah. Watch out for its tail swipe. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot. Sometimes he charges at you. There you go. <laughs> oh man. But anyways, oh, yeah, that's, that's the um, thank you guys very much uh, for making the time because, like, like I said, it's very hard for us to all coordinate all of these different uh, time zones. So thank you guys for making the time. Uh, thank you for the invite. It's been so much. Yeah, fun. thank you. You guys, um, you guys should definitely check out uh, Rage Gaming and uh, Cotton. We're gonna put all of the links in the description as we always do, and uh, obviously tune Dino, in Saturday. I know. Oh, I said cut. this was the first. This was the first time. It was the first time. It was. It was the first time. <laughs> you almost had it, man. And, no, but listen. It's also because I didn't say Josh either. I said Rage Gaming. That's, That's why I was like, yeah. it oh, was yeah. on brand. Yeah. See, ah, I was like, Rage Gaming okay. and Cut. See, it was all on exactly. brand. I'll give you it. <laughs> exactly. It's all the brand. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you guys should definitely tune in on Saturday to, to their channel. They're going to be doing the, the Monster Hunter 1 thing, and it's going to be awesome and probably crazy and annoying. <laughs> <laughs> for you guys, that is. I'm pretty sure it's going to be very entertaining for anyone watching. Yeah. But oh, uh, yeah. that is going to be it for today. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit up with a like button. If you did not enjoy it, hit up with dislike button. Feedback is important. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong, stay safe, and stay sweet. <laughs> oh, nice. Was, I got chills. We have a combo. We work together. <laughs>